God bless. Same to you. Today's a scorch. <laughs> Well, husband, how goes it? Good. I should get it finished today. Where on earth is Henry? I need him to run some errands. He was still sleeping when I went out. At this hour? Blue-blooded idler. Well, it looks like he was out all evening, drinking like a lord. <laughs> Go and get the lazy bones up then. Quick clout round the ear should do it. Mm -hmm. Henry, get up now. There's work to be done. Get up or I'll come get you up, you slugger bed. Hear that? You'd better not vex him. Now get up quick. Your breakfast is on the table. Wait, what's this? Have you been... Oh, Henry. How many times have I told you about fighting? Oh, it's nothing. It's just a scratch. You've been at that sword play again, haven't you? You'd better pray your father doesn't get to hear of it. You know how he feels about it. Oh, don't worry, it wasn't that. I, I just scratched myself, is all. Hmm, well, just don't come crying to me if you really do get hurt. Now get up, you rogue. A fine state you're in this morning. What on earth did you get up to last night? Oh, nothing much. Me and the lads were just having a chat in the tavern. Some wayfarer stopped by. He was telling us what's going on in the world and, um... Well, I, uh, I lost track of time. Well, I hope he didn't fill your head with nonsense. Well, I've got a feeling there's something you're not telling me. And it's connected with that scratch on your hand. And that suspicious-looking character with a sword who turned up in town recently. You think he's teaching me sword fighting, don't you? What use would that be to me? Here. I'm not lying to you, Ma. All right, then, if you say so. I don't mean to pry. But you know your father takes a dim view of such things. Did Matthew and Fritz come looking for me? No, I haven't seen them this morning. They shouldn't be hard to find. They'll be hanging around a tavern somewhere, as usual. Matthew and Fritz aren't drunkards. I never said they were, did I? And if I really minded you going for a beer with them, I'd have put a stop to it long ago. I was young once too, you know. And your father was no angel when he was in Kuttenberg. Of course he wasn't. <laughs> you don't believe me? Ask him yourself. All right, I will. You're not a boy anymore, Henry. You're a man, and it's time to start acting like one. Yesterday, you promised your father you'd help at the forge. If you made yourself useful now and then, I wouldn't mind your mischief-making so much. Can I get something to eat? I left some breakfast on the table. Help yourself. Is father angry with me for sleeping late? He's not happy. 
Yesterday you promised him you'd help finish that sword for Sir Ratzig. He's not as young as he was, and you know how his joints pain him. He's too proud to complain, but he needs your help, Henry. I know. Don't worry, Ma. Of course I'll help him. Good. He always says his knees ache when there's a storm coming. I hope they're wrong this time. It's looking like such a nice day. Do you need me to do anything, Ma? Ah, you're a good lad. But I'm fine. It's your father needs helping with that sword. At least you're up. That's a start. Anyway, we have a lot of work to do today. I'm finishing the sword for Sir Radzik, and I need your help. With what? I'm running out of charcoal. Run to the market and buy a bag from the charcoal burner. I'll need some money, then. Yeah, that's the other thing. Kunesh still owes me for an axe, a hammer, and the nails I sold him a month ago. Not to mention his debt from before. Go and tell him to pay up, at least for the axe and hammer, and then use the money to buy the charcoal. Kunesh, that drunkard. <laughs> That'll be fun. Well, you're a big lad now. I'm sure you can manage. If not, tell him that next time I'll come myself and personally use that hammer to bang those nails into his arse. Sure I'll be happy to hear it. Is that all? Not quite. The Chamberlain at the castle has the cross guard for Sir Radzik's sword, which I had engraved in Sasso. You want me to go and pick it up? All right. Money, charcoal, cross guard. Got it. And ale. <laughs> Stop off at the tavern on your way home. I know you'll be going there anyway to see that girl of yours. But make sure the ale's still cool from the cellar when you get back. Her name is Bianca. Right, so make sure Bianca draws me a nice cool one. Run along now, work won't wait. be with you. I'm with you, Henry. How are you? Father sent me. We're forging a sword for Sir Radzik, and the Chamberlain has the cross guard and pommel. Father had them engraved in Sassau. Right. They're here. The Chamberlain gave them to us for you. We looked them over. Beautiful work. I've never seen anything so fine. I can't wait to see the sword. Just make sure you don't botch it. And did I ever botch anything? 
Where shall I start? Ah, shut up and give me what I want, or I'll kick your ass this evening. Right away, your lordship. Magnificent. Shame I can't keep the sword for myself. Well, I'd better go if we're to get the job done by this evening. Godspeed. See you later in the tavern. You certainly will. After today's work, the ale might even be on me. God be with you, Kunesh. What do you want? My father sent me to get the coin you owe him for the axe, hammer and nails. I've got nothing. Clear off. You know you owe father for a lot more than just the axe and hammer. If he went to the bailiff about it, you'd be in deep water. At least pay for the tools if you can't pay for everything. I told you I have no coin, you bastard! Get the hell out of here, or I'll use the axe on you. Look, I know things aren't easy. Your wife ran off, booze is dear these days, and you're as much use as a square wheel. It's no wonder you're short of coin. But a debt's a debt, and I can't leave here without something. If I had anything to give, I'd give it. But I've got nothing. So leave me in peace, all of you. And don't come back. Hey. Have you recovered from yesterday's great wound? No, it was nothing. Except Mother noticed and had a word or two to say about it. No mother's happy when a son starts to take an interest in swords. Where there's weapons, there's death. The question is, what do you want? I don't want to rot in this hole forever. I feel like I don't belong here. I want to live and see the world. The world's a dangerous place and I need to know how to protect myself. Spoken like a man. And as it happens, today's your last chance. I have to leave. So, are you ready to get stuck in? Yes. All right, I wait on the ground by the sheepfold as usual. God be with you. Do you need anything? Good luck then. I'd like to discuss the price. Sure, why not? Finally, a reasonable sum. God be with you. <laughs> Take care.
Let's talk about the price. Sure, why not? Finally, a reasonable sum. You can't be serious, Dutch. Insulting our king. What insult? I say only the truth. Sigismund has done only what he had to. I had to. He had to abduct the king. He had to lure his cousin Prokop into a trap and imprison him. He had to invade with his army of Tatars and besiege Kutenberg. Why not? What is this Wenceslas for a king? The empire is falling asunder in his hands. The German counts elected Ruprecht of the Palatinate as king because your Wenceslas would not go to their deeds even. German counts? Traitor. Now even the Pope God be with you, Henry. I'm with you, Matthew. What's going on here? Deutsche spouting shit. What? Just listen and you'll hear for yourself. Someone has to bring order and reunite the Empire. <laughs> what do I care about the Austrians? And nowadays, not even the devil himself can keep up with all the Popes. Which is the rightful Pope? The one in Rome or the one in Avignon? Do not blaspheme, Alex. No, it's true, though. Wenceslas is the king of Bohemia. Bohemian nobles are on his side. To hell with Rosenberg and his cabal. Sir Ratzik is Wenceslas' commander-in-chief. He stayed loyal to the king. And if he heard you talking like this, he would have you whipped like a dog. Your deal will soon have nothing left to rule. Jobs had to sell Luxembourg to help your king. South Bohemia is with Sigismund and... don't and forget about Gutenberg. Well, Germans like you kissed Sigismund's feet to keep their heads. Yes, but Goodman Deutsch, this is pointless. Let us talk of more pleasant things. My words exactly. Deutsch has gone too far. Wenceslas is our rightful king. Deutsch is an idiot. But what can you do? I might have an idea. Deutsch deserves to be taught a lesson, doesn't he, Fritz? Too, I'm after you. Should give him a proper hiding. Are you mad? Do you want to end up in the pillory? Don't listen to Fritz. I've got a better idea. Deutsch was talking such shit, it made me think of that huge parliament. You know, the one right next to his freshly whitewashed house. <laughs> you think we should redecorate for him? Count me in. Well, I'd rather touch it, to be honest. But. Doing some tears will do. What do you say, Henry? But I was going to get ale for a father and a, a few other things. We're finishing Sir Ratzik's sword. Come on. Doing a few handfuls of manure is not going to take all day. And it's our duty to defend the honor of our king. So, how? Are you with us? Not that I don't want to teach the Deutsche a lesson, but I really don't have time. Well, that's disappointing. Still, we can manage without you. Let's go, lads. Honestly, hell. How could you pass a good chance like this? God save, my lovely. You're looking well today. <laughs> you too, handsome. What brings you here? Henry. Your beauty, of course. <laughs> oh, noble sir. I'm as honoured as any simple maid can be. And apart from my beauty, what else might your worship desire? I need ale for father. A pitcher as usual? Aye. Bring me a cool one from the cellar. <laughs> but of course. Here you are. Thanks. It's on me today. 
<laughs> you can pay me back this evening. Out of the question. Here you go. And this evening I'll have something more for you. <laughs> I can't wait. Thanks. You'll have something to look forward to this evening. <laughs> you too. Oh, uh, by the way, that shifty looking fellow was asking after you. Vanya? I suppose. He's a man who makes his coin robbing honest wayfarers. I'm sure of it. I'll be happy when he's gone for good. But what in heaven's name are you up to with him? He promised to teach me how to use a sword. What use would that be to you? Enough. You sound just like father. I'll be going now. See you this evening. Hal, I've got something special for you. Is that so? Now what would that be? Your favourite, Savior Schnapps. Really? You're an angel. <laughs> I hope you'll thank me properly later. You bet I will. God be with you, Henry. Look at you, lover boy. The Deutsch is mouthing off again. Oh, don't talk to me about him. He's a good customer. But when it comes to politics, he's unbearable. The number of times I had to throw him and the others out so they wouldn't start brawling. Well, I'd say he's an exceptional form today. How did things end up at the Deutsches? His whole house is covered in shit. True, but I'm worried that fucker Hans will snitch on us. Well, let him. Then I'll snitch on him. And anyway, what can they do to us for throwing a bit of dung? Good point. It's not as if anyone really likes the Deutsch. Anyway, nice job at the Deutsches. Never a dull moment with you lot. <laughs> So, can we get started? We can. Good. And since today's the last time we'll be seeing each other, you can show me everything I've taught you so far. Very well. Let's start with the basics. Keep moving. Your life depends on it. Alright, alright. Now try to hit me. You have to put your weight into your attack. If you just fiddle around, you'll get nowhere. Try slashing from different sides. Unpredictability is the key. Never repeat yourself. Uh, not bad. Uh, not bad. Alright. Alright. Not bad. Again. 
The point of the blade is for stabbing. Try it a few times. Very good. Very good. Good. Once again. Good, good. Let's try something else. One strike, I can fend off without a sweat. But if you chain your strikes, I'll have a much harder time. As soon as you land one blow, follow it with another. Nice. Not bad. Again. Good. All right, that's enough. I don't know about you, but I'm tired and thirsty. Remember though, train hard. No one becomes a master swordsman overnight. You have to work and work. And the main thing is to use what you've learned in real combat. There's nothing better than experience, believe me. God save you, Henry! What did you actually do in Kuttenberg? Oh, all sorts. You had to be able to put your hand to anything if you wanted to make a living. But I was never far from iron. I'd like to see Kuttenberg sometime. I'll take you there one day, never fear. It's a beautiful city, but in the end you'll learn the best places here by the Sasso. We've kind nobles, fertile land, and plenty of everything. And do you know Sir Radzig well? We've known each other long enough. About time. Have you got everything I wanted? I have charcoal, the hilt, and the ale. We can start. Good job. Let's have it then, son. Well done. Right. Let's see what kind of job the master in Sassau did for us. <laughs> Look at that lad. That's what I call craftsmanship. What does the inscription mean? Dan Divino. Doesn't look like Czech to me. Latin, maybe? Lord Radzig ordered it. Oh, this will be the finest sword I've ever made. Have we got the charcoal? Good. And fire up the forge. We'll put it all together. By the way, I heard some gossip about what happened to Deutsch. I expect you know something about it. Maybe. Maybe? Someone threw dung at Deutsch's freshly lime-washed house, maybe. And maybe those cronies of yours had something to do with it. That Deutsch was talking treason in the tavern about Sigismund and the King. He got what he deserved. Oh, got what he deserved, did he? Look, I don't know if you're mixed up in this or if it's just those friends of yours. It's all the same to me. But I have a trade to run. The German pays well. And having my son in the pillory helps nothing and nobody. Least of all the king. Do you understand? Yes. Look me in the eye, Henry. Do you understand? I understand. Good. Then we'll never have this conversation again. What, so you think it's right to let traitors speak ill of the king? Does that boy ever listen to a word I say? So Deutsch spouts rubbish, so what? You might win a fight with violence, but you'll never win an argument. Remember, Henry, if you want to convince someone that they're wrong, try using your mouth, not your fists. The furnace is ready. Right, we'll do the grip. I'll heat it up, and when I take it out, 
You slip the grip on so it fits exactly. You know what you're doing. Do it. Good. Once more. That's it. Done. Now file it down so it sits well in the hand. I'll prepare the guard. Father, why did you leave Prague? Who ever heard of a master swordsmith making horseshoes in a village? <laughs> I had my reasons, Hal. And here I have your mother and you. Why would I want any other life? Do you remember Emperor Charles? I do. Life was good under his reign. Better than now. He built half of Prague and a score of castles. Had a bridge made over the Moldau and founded a university. And all without a war. He knew how to rule. Better than Wenceslas. Better by far. But Wenceslas doesn't have it easy. It's hard to step into the shoes of someone whose like is born only once a thousand years. What about Sigismund? Do you think Charles would have brought an army down on his own people like Sigismund? No. <laughs> Wenceslas may not be the equal of his father, but Sigismund, he brings shame to the royal name. How's it going? Give it here, and we'll put it all together. It's magnificent. Indeed it is. The Lord be with you. My father sent me for those nails. Good day to you, Teresa. They're ready. Will you fetch them for me, Hal? They're in the trunk in the living room. Henry, are you all right? <laughs> Sorry, girl. Here are those nails you wanted. Thanks. So, how's Bianca? Um, she's fine. Why do you ask? Just wondering. Will you be going to the dance this evening? We will. Maybe we'll see each other there. Anyway, mustn't keep you. I'll be on my way. That sword is truly beautiful. Fine lass, eh? Now stop staring at her and come and see this. It's time for the trial by fire. <laughs> we did a fine job. I would expect nothing less from such a renowned swordsmith. Well, those days are gone, sir. Hmm. You haven't lost your skills, though. Would you like to try it? Sir, what good is a sword to a commoner? Let try it.
<laughs> you still have a lot to learn. Ask your father to show you how. He knows what he's about. Learning his trade will serve him better in life, sir. Perhaps. But who knows what the future holds for each of us. I see that you almost have it finished. It just needs a polish, then Henry will bring it to you. Excellent. Fine work, very fine. A sword such as this will bring honor to its bearer. What say you say, Svan? True, Sir Radzik. If I'd have had its like back in Nicopolis, things would have worked out differently. How odd to find such an accomplished swordsmith working in a place like this. A man of his talent would have no problem making a fortune in Prague or Vienna. You're right. It's a very long and peculiar story. I'd be glad to listen to it over a cup of wine, but duty calls and I must leave. Here you are. Learn from your father. He truly is a master of his craft. I'm sure our paths will cross again. They certainly will. Once it's ready, send your son up to me with it. Good work, Martin. Sure. It's been an honor, Sir Isvan. Have a safe journey to Sassau. The honor is mine, Sir Radzik. Thank you for the hospitality. A long, peculiar history. <laughs> that was a long time ago. I might tell you about it sometime, but not today. Will you teach me how to use it, like Sir Radzik said? Why? Well, it could come in useful. Maybe I'll travel a bit before settling down. I'd like to know more than the tavern on the green in the forge. You know the trouble with an adventurous life, son? It can end before it gets started. I might teach you how to handle a sword, and then someone will shoot you with a crossbow as soon as you set foot outside the house. You talk as if you've seen it happen. A man my age has seen a lot. Being a blacksmith might bring no glory, but it has its benefits, like keeping your head on your shoulders. I want to end my days in Scalitz, here, beneath the linden tree, and by your mother's side. Well, so do I, one day. But first, I'd like to see the world, meet new people. Meet them, or beat them. Meet. You have to keep going on about it. <laughs> then you've no need to learn swordplay. A messenger. He was in a hurry. What's happened? sword, go into the house and grab anything else important from the trunk. Go to the castle. Hurry. And what about you? Your mother is in the village. I'll fetch her and we'll follow right behind. I'll go with you. No. You'll do what I say right now. Give the sword to Sir Radzik. If anything happens, he'll take care of you. He owes me.
Go to hell, you Tatar beast! Oh, grand, I should have distorted the world, I should have. Hamburg is to the left, along the stream. Flee to 
Talmberg! Run for it! I go like yeah. that pudush. Someone give him a drink and bring hot wine and bandages. Tell me, boy, who are you and where are you from? What in hell's name happened? I've come from Scalitz. They burned it to the ground, slaughtered everyone. Who? Who burned it to the ground? A huge army. They attacked without warning. And, and they weren't Czechs or Germans either. Who then? I don't know. I've never seen armor like it or heard their language. Maybe Tartars? Tartars, you say? Yeah. Well, we'll deal with that later. First, let's have a look at that leg of yours. Grit your teeth, boy. I'm gonna pull that arrow out. Easy. All done. You were lucky, lad. The arrow missed the bone. It only needed bandaging, and I've done that often enough before. War is a good teacher. Can you stand? There you go. Good as new. Thank you. If you idlers nothing better to do, get back to work. You'll have to speak to Lord Divish. Can you manage? Sir, this is a survivor from- I heard, Robard. Tell me, boy, what exactly happened? Did you see the insigns of the attackers? And were there any more survivors? Sir, um, I don't know what army it was, but it was huge. There were dozens of banners flying on the hill above Scalitz. The ones who did the slaughtering spoke a, a strange language. They burned Scalitz to the ground. But a lot of people took refuge in the castle. I wasn't quick enough. 
And as I fled, they shouted from the battlements that I should come and warn you. The soldiers the boy didn't recognize. They could be those Cumans of Sigismund's. It said they came to Hungary from the east, and now they're the core of his army. Sacking Gutenberg must have given him a taste for stolen silver. Skalos is a small castle, sir. If Sigismund attacks, they can't hold. Indeed, Sir Robard. And our small garrison would be no help, even if we could risk sending them. You think we're next in line? Maybe. What's your name, boy? I'm Henry, son of the Scalitz blacksmith. I know him. Did he make it inside the castle? I'm sorry. It's in God's hands now. No one else can help us. Anyway, thank you for risking your neck to warn us. Robard, take care of Henry. Make sure he gets something to eat and some rest. Yes, sir. And get all the people inside the gates. We have to prepare for the worst. Make all the necessary arrangements. As you command, sir. You've done well, lad. I'm sorry for your loss. You must be all done in. Why don't you go to the kitchen and have a good meal? Sorrow is easier to bear on a full stomach. I heard about your father. You're that they say he was a swordsmith who... What in heaven's name happened there? Portions. I can't understand. It was a fine sunny day until Sigismund came with his army. I saw him sitting there with his red beard and proud posture as he gave the signal to attack. Oh no! I ran to the castle for shelter with the others. Behind me I could hear the shouts of the attackers and the screams of the wounded. Then I turned and saw father trying to save mother. They were both killed. The gate was closed by then. The men on the battlements were calling to me to run and warn you here. And with God's help, I made it. My God, that's horrible. You were lucky to survive. And our thanks for warning us. I'll pray that you see better times. Ah, milady. You are fortunate our good lady Stephanie of Talmberg has graced us with her presence. My lady, I'm honored. So this is our brave young man. Welcome, lad. Bojana here will take care of you. No doubt you're tired and hungry. <laughs> Indeed. How could he not be, poor soul? After everything he's been through, he must be as hungry as a bear. Aren't you, young master? Here you are, then. Eat your fill. And a little wine to wash it down. Thank you, my lady. <clears throat> when you're done, you can go and rest with the grooms in the outer bailey. No, that won't do, Sir Robard. After all he's been through, he deserves a proper bed. Let him sleep in a lodge in the courtyard. Certainly, my lady. Young Henry here is overwhelmed by your generosity. Oh, yes, yes, thank you, my lady. May God reward you for your kindness. Eat up now. You're in capable hands, so I'll leave you to it. Good night. Good night. Good night, ma'am. When you've done, you can sleep in the bedchamber of the courtyard lodge. 
And don't forget to take off those filthy boots before getting into bed. How did you manage that? It was a fine sunny day until Sigismund came with his army. I saw him sitting there with his red beard and proud posture as he gave the signal to attack. Oh no! I ran to the castle for shelter with the others. Behind me I could hear the shouts of the attackers and the screams of the wounded. Then I turned and saw father trying to save mother. They... they were both killed. The gate was closed by then. The men on the battlements were calling to me to run and warn you here. And with God's help I made it. That's horrible. You were very fortunate to survive. And God bless you for warning us. I'll pray for you, lad. I have to eat something. My insides are shriveled up with the hunger. The patrols will be doubled. Keep your eyes peeled. If you see anything out of the ordinary, report it immediately. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes? It is I, Henry. Forgive the intrusion. I didn't wake you, boy, did I? Uh, my lady... Uh... Um, no, no, not at all. But what brings you here at this hour? I thought you could do with a little wine. It's just what you need to help you sleep. My lady, um, thank you. You really shouldn't. You could have sent a sermon. I was going to... But, to tell you the truth, I couldn't sleep either. I thought of you while saying my prayers. How awful it must have been for you. I came to offer you solace. To let you know you're not alone. Thank you. Thank you kindly. You're welcome. Now, Henry. I know this is all very new and strange for you. But I want you to feel at home here. You're not to worry about anything except getting better. God knows you've been through a terrible ordeal. I know what it is to be left alone in the world. 
although your loss is much greater. But with God's help, the pain will ease in time. And it can help to talk about it, if you feel like it. I'll tell you what happened. It was terrible and unexpected. The day started just like any other. Father sent me into town on some errands. A fellow by the name of Kunesh owed money to Father, who sent me to collect it from him. Only Kunesh had no intention of paying. It got a bit heated, as often happens when there's money involved. Kunesh still wouldn't cough up the coin. Father was too generous for his own good. Letting even a scoundrel like that buy on credit. Oh. When I'd done all the errands, I headed back home. I promised Father I'd help him with his work, and I was looking forward to it. He was forging a sword for Sir Radzi. The sword was taking shape when Sir Radzi himself came to have a look at it. He praised Father's work and said that with his smithing skills, he could easily make a living in Prague or Vienna. You don't say. But Sigismund's horde was already on the horizon, ready to attack the town. I saw smoke on the horizon from a village Sigismund pillaged on the way to our town, which was soon to meet the same fate. God have mercy. And then death descended on Scalitz. Father told me to take shelter in the castle while he went to get Mother. She was stranded in the town, surrounded by Sigismund butchers. And then I saw him knocking down one cumin after another. I never saw him fight like that. But then the leader of Sigismund's raiding party, a knight in full armour, saw Father and charged at him. He cut down my father without a thought. And then he turned on my mother. And he murdered her in cold blood. You poor boy. May the Lord have mercy on their souls. I ran to the castle like our neighbours to take cover, but I didn't make it. I had to find another way to save myself. The men on the battlements called down to me to flee to Talmberg and warn you. I was lucky I knew a concealed path around the castle. I no longer heard any sounds of battle coming from the castle. So Sigismund's army must have regrouped and started preparing for siege. No doubt you're right. Then I heard a scream. It was Teresa, the mill wench. She'd been caught by a gang of cumin savages who planned to violate her. I had Sir Radzik's sword, and even though there were several of them and they were better armed, I had to try and save her. I wanted there to be at least one person I'd helped. And I succeeded, even though it almost cost me my life. After that, I stole a horse from them and rode off. Like a valiant knight. I'll never forget the horror. It will haunt me for the rest of my life. That's terrible. How could something like that happen? God alone knows why he lets such things happen. Oh, you poor boy. I understand your grief, but God is not to blame for the ills of this world. That is the work of Satan and those who do his bidding. Those who are corrupted by greed, envy and pride. You must not lose faith, whatever life brings. Fate has not been merciful to me and my husband either. Although, in comparison to the horrors you went through... I was young when I married my husband. It was my father's wish. Divish was a lot older than I, but a woman must bear her lot. Shortly after our marriage, before I even got a look at Talmberg, the castle was stormed and my husband was imprisoned. Really? 
My husband had some quarrel with Sir Havel Medek of Valdek, who decided to resolve it by force. He stormed the castle, burned down the village of Probislavets, and killed many of our men, even the old Chamberlain. He imprisoned my husband in the castle and put his own garrison there. That's awful. I was barely 18 years old, and all of a sudden, I was left alone with Sir Robert. We didn't know what to do. We went to Prague to appeal to the king and sought help from divisious friends, but all to no avail. We tried for years, but it seemed I was destined to be left alone and my husband to rot in jail in his own castle. Years, you say? Seven years. That's how long it took before Havel was condemned as an enemy of the crown. And even then, he refused to surrender the castle and release my husband. In the end, I raised the money to pay a ransom. And only then, by the grace of Lord Jesus, did I finally lay eyes on my husband once more. Seven years. And was Havel punished for it? Never. And after seven years, my husband returned to me an infirm old man. Sir Divish seems like a good, strong man. Well, certainly, only he has many concerns. He had to rebuild Talmberg. After he was released, the king appointed him Burgrave of Prague Castle, and he was very busy. He had no time for me at all. But at least we were in the city, and there was something going on. And now, we're here. My lady, you're still young and beautiful. Your best years are still ahead of you. Would that that were true, lad. Would it were true. But what am I doing bothering you with this? You have troubles enough of your own. I'll go and let you sleep. I enjoyed our little talk, Henry. Good night, and God bless. Good night, my lady. Henry, wake up. You don't want to miss this. What is it? What's happening? Come to the battlements. One of our patrols reported a company heading here from Skelets. God be with you. Do you know what's happening? No. What about you? Me? How could I? I saw you with the robot. 
Didn't he tell you anything? No, nothing. Hmm. May the Lord watch over you. My respects to you. You know what's happening? Sigismund, who else? That bastard conquered Scullitz, and now he's come to take Townburg. God be with you. God be with you. What's happening? Have you heard anything? No. It could be Sigismund's army, or his scouts, or maybe Scarlet's folk who survived the pillaging. I wouldn't expect nothing good. God be with you. Jesus Christ be praised. You know what's happening? Don't ask me. I don't know shit. Just a minute ago, I was sleeping after a day's watch at the gate. Farewell. What's going on? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Why would Sigismund advance on Talmud in the night? Especially since he's lost the element of surprise after the raid on Scallops. Maybe it's not him. Then who is it? The scouts give his scent to Scallops, the spy on Sigismund. Said he'd set up camp and was getting ready to storm the castle. And so Ratzig is an experienced soldier. He'd surely hold the castle for quite some time. It doesn't make sense. What else did the spy say? Not much of anything. Before they could get close enough, this huge storm started. And you were right. Sigismund has a hell of a lot of soldiers, including all manner of mercenaries. An army like that costs a fortune. Well, anyway, we'll find out when they get here, won't we? Aye, we will. May the Lord watch over you. Halt! Who goes there? Lucifer and all his minions! Who else, Robert? Sir Ansig. What a relief. Is his lordship there with you? Yes, sir. He is right here. What are you doing up so late, Divish? At your age, you need a good night's sleep. <laughs> well, Rantic, you didn't exactly pick the best time for an outing either. In a big hurry? It was a bit of a scramble, all right. Believe it or not, this tempest is a godsend for me and my men. As my old granddad used to say, better a sore throat than a slick throat. I'd say your grandfather was a wise man. Your messenger told us what happened. Messenger? The lad you sent to warn us. He's alive? He made it to you? He's here with me. He only got away by the skin of his teeth, though. Thank God. A brave young man. But tell me, friend, how on earth did you manage to get away? Thank God for this tempest. When it began, Sigismund's Tatars crawled into their holes and left a storm in the castle for more clement weather. We were able to sneak out right under their noses. The Lord be praised. We wouldn't have stood a chance against them. Would you like to spend the night in Tumber? No, no. When Sigismund finds the castle empty tomorrow, he might come looking for us. We'd only be exposing you to danger. Without me and my men, he has no call to attack you. Well, what will you do then? We'll march to Ratai. It's only a short way, and there we'll have a better chance of defense and enough room for all of these people. If Sigismund should come, better bend your knee, Divish. There's no point dying in a battle that's futile. You're right there. Is that boy still with you? I'm here, sir. You have courage, lad. That I can't deny. I am sorry about what happened. Would you care to join us? I'd like to, sir, but first I have to return to Scalitz. Are you mad? What do you want there? I can't leave my mother and father. I won't leave their corpses rotting in the street. I'll join you once I've taken care of them. Don't even think of going back there, you donkey. Are you tired of living? But, sir! Quiet! 
I'm sorry about your father, but getting killed as well won't help him. Divish, make sure that lad doesn't budge from Talmberg until things quieten down. Not to worry, friend. Anyway, he's injured and needs to recover. I'll lock him up here as if he were Havel of Baldic. I see you've grown a thick skin since your tribulation, sir. But thank you. We'll meet again when circumstances are more favorable. Farewell. Farewell, friend. And good fortune. Give my regards to Sir Hanish. I will. And good luck to you and your people, too. These are dark times. Move out! Men, tonight we'll have triple patrol. Sort out the watches between you as always. And if I... What is it you need? I could use an extra pair of eyes, and yours are key. Will you keep watch on the battlements with my men? Is that a request or an order? I'd rather it was a request you answered yes to. Of course I'll help. I have to pay you back somehow after all you've done for me. Splendid. And don't worry. I'll tell the men to relieve you later. I'll do it. My respects to you. What do you think about how the Scallops plate managed to flee the siege? Thank the Lord. I thought it was Sigismund descending on us. Seems everyone thought that. Well, we were all expecting the worst. And the truth is, I'm still worried what will happen when Sigismund comes here. And come he will, of that I'm sure. I just hope we'll be as fortunate when we're face to face with that fucker. By the way, Henry, my condolences. Thank you. Wandering around like a stray sheep. Must be your first watch, eh? I don't think anything much will be happening today. You can just lean against the wall and wait till morning. I'll show you what's what. I will. God be with you. What do you think about the flight of the Scarlet's fate? I'd say Sir Rodzik is a fine lord. He made the most of the situation and saved his subjects. You don't see that very often. He was lucky that big storm came. But that's just it. Something happens by chance and you turn it to your advantage. There's not many capable of thinking so fast. My respects to you. What do you think about the Scallets folk managing to slip away like that? I can't imagine that. The more I think about it, they was either blessed, or Sigurdsson's mercenary army ain't up to much. When you're on campaign, you keep watch no matter how much it's pissing down. If any of us makes such a cocker, Sir Robard would flare his skin up our backs. You only say that because you never saw them attack. Aye. Well... It's a shame your folks couldn't be safe. Is Sir Robard really that tough? Tough? Aye. But he's fair. He's a veteran of many a campaign, so he knows Warcraft. I believe it. What be with you? Good health to you.
What do you think about that surprise during the night? I was surprised, all right. <laughs> I'm glad them people were saved, though. I'm just as glad it weren't Sigismund. For sure he'll come here in the end, too. But now at least we've got time to get ready for it. Maybe he'll leave Talmberg B. Maybe, maybe not. Could be he was only out to get Sir Radzik, because he's Wenceslas' headman. The Scarlets is a rich town, so there was plenty of loot for the taking. Two birds with one stone. So he might be satisfied and leave us alone. I reckon we'll see soon enough, one way or the other. Hmm. By the way, Henry. It is Henry, ain't it? I was sorry to hear about your parents. They've gone on to better things. Take care now. My respects to you. What do you think about the Scarlet's fight? It's a hell of a thing. First, everyone is shitting themselves that Sigismund is coming, and then it turns out like this. Praise the Lord they got out of the siege. Scarlet's castle is well fortified, all right, but I hear Sigismund's army is huge, and facing him is suicide. Sir Radzig did the right thing. I'm sorry you didn't all manage to get away. So am I. May God is your plan. Thank you. I reckon that Sir Radzik must be a good man, the way he looks after his people. But you probably know him better. Not really. My father was forging a sword for him, and when he came to have a look at it, we exchanged a few words. That's it. Hmm. Then that's a fine move. self-appointed king wins the love and respect of his loyal subjects. Indeed, Robard. Sigismund of Luxembourg has a rare talent for winning people over to his cause. You may be in for a surprise. I don't think he will set his heathen dogs on us today. Greetings, Lord of Tomberg. <laughs> The bastard who let the attack of Scarlet and killed my parents! Don't be an idiot! Do you want to end up like them? I am Sir Mark Vart von Aulitz. I come in the name of Sigismund of Luxembourg, King of Hungary and Croatia, who has resolved to strike against those who disrupt Concord in the land and to restore order in the name of his brother, King Wenceslaus IV. Restore order by burning and pillaging the king's estates. 
Greetings, Sir Markvard. The efforts of the king's brother to bring order to this chaotic land are undoubtedly noble. It seems to me, though, that he and his army have somewhat strayed. As Burgrave of Prague Castle, I am entirely beholden to the king. And here in Talmberg, divine peace reigned until your arrival. To what then do we owe the honor of your visit? Yesterday, His Majesty took action against the enemy of the kingdom, Sir Ratzik Kobila, who has been using the silver from the Scarlet's mine to fund insurrection against the crown. Unfortunately, the insurgent escaped. Would you happen to know, noble sir, where he might be at this time? As far as I know, the Sir Radzik, of which you speak, is the king's hetman at Scarlet's. I find it hard to imagine that he would rebel against our king. Nevertheless, I can assure you that Sir Radzik is not a Talmurg. He would be a fool indeed to flee from one castle, where he has little chance of defense, to another, where he has even less. Or do you take the view that my humble manner is any obstacle to your army. Am I to inform the king then that Zeratsi Kobila is not a Tamburg and that he has your loyalty? Sir Radzig Kobila is not here, and I have no intentions of getting embroiled in affairs from which I have nothing to gain. Very well, sir. As you wish. I will relay your words to the king in the hope he will be as well disposed as you seem to be. Those who have clean consciences and goodwill may find themselves well disposed even at moments like this, when there is little cause for joy. Farewell, sir. Auf Wiedersehen. My lord, you have my utmost admiration. Get on with you, Robard. Good day to you. Do you know where I can buy and sell things? Well, if it's food you need, go and ask in the kitchen. But if you want something else, I can't help. One of the villagers might know. What do you think about how the Scarlet's folk managed to get away? Fortune smiled on them, that's for certain. Sigismund must be seething with rage. It's just a shame Fortune didn't smile on all of them. Oh shit. Sorry. And you know Sir Radzig Kubila? I wouldn't say I know him. I've seen him a few times. Why do you ask? Well, he must be a fine lord to take such good care of every one of his serfs. Surely all the lords do that. Ah, I could tell you some stories. About Sir Divish? Jesus, no. I didn't mean it like that. Just that I heard stories from other soldiers that would make your skin crawl. I see. That was a tense moment this morning with Sigismund. Sir Divish handled it masterfully. 
This is a strong castle. It should stand up to a siege, but Sigismund has an awful lot of soldiers. Who are those peculiar mercenaries of his? You mean the Cumans? No one knows much about them, except Sigismund enlisted them somewhere in the east. They're an evil-looking bunch, aren't they? Not just looking. Farewell. There's law and order in the land. God be with you. Is there someone here who trades in goods? Votava is your man. He's the local dealer, a skinny fellow. I saw him by the granary. He'll buy anything that has any value, and he'd sell you his own granny, if he hadn't already sold her long since. What do you think about Sigismund withdrawing? He was a stroke of good luck. I know everyone says how clever Sir Divish is and all that. But it was a dangerous situation. That Sigismund is awful unpredictable. He abducts the king, raids towns, brings foreign mercenaries into the heart of our country. God alone knows what he'll get up to next. Good luck to you. My respects to you. Farewell. Sigismund and his heathen cutthroats will come out of the woods any time now and God be with you. All. They won't come back. Why would they? Can you tell me who I can buy Save something from or sell to? You want Votava, the fellow that fixes the weir tomorrow. at the Talmberg fish or pond. He should be around house. the granary somewhere. What in God's name are you on about? I hear that's what them foreign soldiers do. And worse. They do nothing of the sort. Why did you hear that nonsense? Vilma heard the guards on watch talking about it. Nobody's going to attack us, never mind foreign soldiers. Don't Sigismund's worry. moved on and we've got nothing Safe? to worry about. Sigismund and we can always can come and take come shelter here at the cost. Anyway, you said yourself you don't believe a word Vilma says. Why would stop working you yourself? So you it's fine and that's how it'll go. Hi, but... No buts. Did you see the horror of your foreign soldiers? Some with the strange clothes and eye masks on their faces. Aye, I saw them. Made my blood run cold. God be with you. I heard they prisoners in the broth from corpses. God be with you. What can I do for you? Can you tell me who I can buy something from or sell to? Everyone fled here with only what they could carry, but I reckon Votava, the pond keeper, wouldn't let even Sigismund interrupt his business. I saw him by the granary. You can't miss him. He's skinny as a bulrush. Sigismund's visit this morning was pretty alarming, isn't it? And no mistake. That army of his is enormous. It's a good thing Sir Divish is such a fine speaker or that have squashed us like bugs. Goodbye. Good morning. Is there someone here who trades in goods? Try Votava. He's as thin as a starving hound and about as cheerful, but he can get anything you want. I saw him by the local granary. God bless. Good God! What happened to your clothes? If you were robbed, you should report it. Take care. God be with you. Farewell. Did you see them horrible thoughts? Aye, but better to save a few if I can. Good day to you. And what do you need? Take care now. Mary, mother of God. Good day to you. Can we trade? If you've got the coin. God be with you.
Let's talk about the price. Aye. Agree? Come now. Just a little more and we have a deal. My last offer. That's not enough. Well, that's a decent price. save you. What do you need? My lady, I hope you weren't unduly distressed by the arrival of Sigismund's army this morning. Well, it was to be expected. And thanks to God's mercy and my good husband, there was no more bloodshed. But it's something else that distresses me. Maybe my mind deceives me. But I have an evil foreboding. You, my lady? Surely not. No evil could possibly come to you. I fear something bigger and worse will come. That Sigismund is only another omen of imminent evil. Of great evil. I would like to ask your assistance, my lady, if I may be so bold. What's the matter, lad? I need to get out of the castle, and your husband is keeping me here by force. Why, for the love of God, would you want to leave the castle? My parents are lying in the mud of scallops at the mercy of dogs and jackdaws. I can't just leave them there. That's terrible. May the Lord have mercy on their souls. But how can I help you, Henry? I don't want your death on my conscience. If I could just get past the guard at the gate somehow. But... but you can. If you wear a proper suit of armour, and if he can't see your face, he won't recognise you and he'll let you go. Good thinking. And where can I get the armour? At the armoury? Where's that? In the gate tower. But the soldiers sleep in other places around the castle too, and you might find armour nearby. It's rather embarrassing, but if I'm to pay a bribe, I need money, and unfortunately I don't have any. How would you? Don't worry your head about it. This should be enough. Thank you, my lady. I will repay you, I swear. Well, they'll certainly ask where I'm going. You could tell them Sir Robard sent you to Ujits. To ask the parish priest how the folk there are faring. That sounds reasonable. Thank you, my lady. I must go now. What do you think, my lady? Do I look like a Talmberg soldier? Not quite, Henry. Just look at you. Oh, I see. Well, thanks. God bless.
I pray you're wrong. So I asked Ron. I Hey. Jesus Christ be praised. Why did Sigismund burn down Scalets and then come here too? That's war for you, lad. Certain lords have resolved to take things into their own hands and eliminate anyone who doesn't share their view. Unfortunately, Sir Radzig is one of those. And what's more, he was sitting on a pile of silver that could help King Wenceslas's allies. What happened in Gutenberg? Gutenberg? Well, I'm just a simple soldier, but the good lord gave me ears, and I've heard some things from Sir Divish and from those who fled from Sigismund's pillaging. Were there many? Indeed. But it was the Kutenberg mercenaries who came to see me, because I knew them from before. I see. Listen, lad. These are all games of the high aristocracy. In Prague, a cabal of nobles rebelled against King Wenceslas, wealthy aristocrats who took against our king for reasons of their own. There's no doubt Sigismund had his fingers in the whole affair. Him and Wenceslas's cousin, Jobst. And that cabal helped him abduct the king. So then why did Sigismund attack Kutenberg? Why do you think? So he could loot it? Correct. King Charles, may God grant him eternal glory, built Prague into a proper royal city, while King Wenceslas took a liking to Kutenberg. After Prague, it's the most important city in Bohemia, in the entire Holy Roman Empire. He who commands the Kutenberg silver is king. So Kuttenberg sided with Wenceslas because he favoured it. Now you're starting to understand. When Sigismund imprisoned Wenceslas and took control of Prague, the people of Kuttenberg began to raise an army against him. So with the attack on Kuttenberg, Sigismund killed two birds with one stone. He defeated Wenceslas's most powerful allies before they could stand against him and also gained immense wealth. Where did these Cumans come from, anyway? I don't know much about them, only what the Chamberlain said. That they came to Hungary from the east and settled there. They're godless barbarians and merciless fighters. The nobles used to say the Hungarian king shouldn't enlist them, because they dishonor our rules of warfare. But when there's power and money to be had, it seems that honor isn't worth my spit. And believe me, it's always about power and money. Sir Robard, I need to get to Scalitz. What would you do there, lad? Sigismund might have left, but the place will be swamped with robber barons, brigands, deserters, and other vermin. And anyway, your lord commanded you to stay here. My parents died there, and I won't leave them to be ravaged by dogs. I have to bury them. Good God, boy. Do you want to throw your life away for those who can never get theirs back? Do you think that's what they'd want? Forget it. Can't you see? Have you seen them? Play? That's some kind. God be with you. Is there someone here who trades in goods? Hungry, are you? You should go and see the cook. She's good-hearted, especially if you come with some coin. <laughs> For anything else, you should see a fellow called Votova. 
folk aren't too fond of him, because he's as surly as a wet cat. But he can get you just about anything. I saw him by the granary. You'll recognize him easy. He looks like he's never had a decent meal in his life. That business with Sigismund turned out well in the end, didn't it? Aye, that was a good start. Now we need to drive him and his war whores out of Bohemia for good. I need to get out of here. And I need a feather bed with a comely wench in it. But it looks like we'll both be disappointed. Sir Divish gave orders not to open the gate, and you especially are not to be let out. Not any longer. I have vital information for Sir Radzig from Sir Divish's spies. The fate of the Scalet's people depends on it. Sir Robard ordered me to leave immediately, so let me out quickly. A likely story. Better clear off before I lose my temper. My mother and father were left in scallops like carrion. I have to bury them. I can't leave them to the dogs. I'm sorry, my friend, but I can't. You'll have to persuade Sir Robard, or think something up so I don't end up in the shit for it. Otherwise, forget it. What am I supposed to think up? How should I know? Maybe some disguise so I could say I didn't recognize you? If a Townberg soldier turns up all kitted out properly, in armor and a helmet, then of course I let him go. That's obvious. All right, I'll have a look around for something. Good luck to you. Garbellion, have you? That's nasty. you. Jesus, you gave me the runaround. Let me go, for Christ's sake. I have to bury my parents. You're going nowhere. Except back inside. If I don't bury them now, they'll be ripped to pieces by jackdaws and scattered over unhallowed ground, 
and I'm stuck here, a stone's throw away. All right, shove me. I'll pretend you caught me off guard and I fell over. I'll deal with the others. You just get out of here on the double. My foot! Come here, lad! Yeah! Wait for me here, friend. Better to keep going on my own. It's like they've already gone.
Hey! No! Easy day! Don't kill me! I have nothing! You're in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> Well, I never. The pictures of...
thing. He didn't run like me. The guy with the sword in his hand. to buy a sign with the gifts to you. In the end, you were a hero. You didn't run away. You didn't abandon me like me. No, no, no. Why? Not you. It wasn't supposed to be you, Bianca. I'll find the bastards that did this to you. I'll find them. I swear it. Just wait a moment. I'll take care of my parents. And then I'll come back for you. I won't leave you like this. Why did you do it to me, Father? Why? Why did you leave me? Forgive me. Forgive me for everything. Next time I won't run. I'll never run away again. the one who did this to you. I remember his face. I'll find him. But first, I have to find the shovel and take care of you. I remember you told me you wanted to lie beside Mother. Here. Under the linden tree. At least I can do that much for you. Get away, you beast! What's going on? Bishak, what in God's name are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? Digging turnips? The beast just went for me! Isn't that Mutt the Butcher's? Isn't that body the Butcher's? Yeah, that's him. What's that got to do with anything? I'd say the poor creature is standing guard over his master. You weren't trying to get to him, were you? What do you care what I'm doing? What are you doing? to bury my parents. So bury them and leave you be. Do you know what happened to Teresa in the middle? When I fled, the Cumans wanted to... 
You meant to violate her. God knows what else. No, I don't. What do I care? They probably raped her and killed her like all the others. Her misfortune. Right now, I've got to take care of myself. How did you manage to get away? How do you think I ran? Could you lend me that space? I have to dig a grave. And I can't find another. What's it worth to you? I see you have a fine sword. I'll gladly trade you my spade for that. How did you come by it, anyway? My father forged it for Sir Radzik. It's my duty to deliver it to him. It's not for sale. Go right ahead and dig that grave with your sword. See how that works. And where will you dig it anyway? Here? You're not going to lay your parents in unhallowed ground, are you? My father said I wanted to be buried here, and I can't take it to St. James. God willing, later I can find a priest to consecrate the ground. I see a cunt remains a cunt, no matter what the situation. Run, you bastard! I've got business to take care of here first. God, how I wish to be gone from this place. But first, I must bury my parents. Keepsake to remember you by, my dearest.
this is a good place. You're gonna like it. Damn it all. How am I going to do this? Do you need some help? Is that him? Yes. Can't you see the sword? Who are you? What do you want? Spishek? Who do you think we are? Franciscan brothers? <laughs> We're here to rob you of everything you've got. Especially that fine blade that's of no use to a peasant like you anyway. Banish the thought. It is my father's sword. You mean him? I don't think he's going to be needed. Listen here, boy. You hand over that sword. I might just let you go. If not, you're in for a family reunion you really don't want. Leave me alone. Kill him, Rat! I cut the bastard down. As you like. Could have just cost you a few teeth. Ah! is going to like it. It's new, isn't it? And now, for the maiden bloodletting. Surely your father never would have imagined it would be your blood. I believe there's a word for such moments. The old man would certainly know. But I'm just a common kid. Did you help make it? No doubt you did. Such miserable luck. To die by the sword you helped forge. Hey, go fuckers! <laughs> the 
games are over. Nicsak, nicsak! Ne bújt itt! No! Henry, help us! You need some help?
Wake up, Henry. It's past sunrise. Henry, can you hear me? Get up, Henry. Wake up. It's a new day. Henry, can you hear me? Hallelujah. I thought you'd never wake. Were you having a nightmare? Uh, Teresa? Hmm. You still have a fever. Uncle won't be pleased, but you'll have to stay in bed. Where am I? In Scalitz? We're at my uncle's mill in Rattay. I didn't know where else to go. What happened? You don't remember anything? I suppose that's not surprising. I found you in Scalitz after those bandits attacked you. I thought they'd done for you. But you were still breathing. Why in heaven's name did you go back there? It was madness. They slaughtered everyone who didn't run. My parents, I... I wanted to bury them. I had to... Don't worry. I took care of it. Thank you. Any good Christian would have done the same. Now sleep. You need your strength back. You're awake. Good morning. <laughs> it's near midnight. You've slept all day. Oh. <laughs> oh, I feel like a horse fell on me. The beating you took was worse. But at least the fever's broken. How did you manage to save me? You were lucky. I was in Scalitz and I saw Zbyshek and his thugs. I tried to distract them, but it would have been no use if those soldiers from Tamburg hadn't arrived. They were searching for you and scattered the bandits. What in the world were you doing in Scalitz? Waiting to die. What? They killed my brothers, my family, my friends. They're all dead? All of them. Everyone I ever loved. They killed one of my brothers in the mines. After that, what did I have to live for? Don't say that. There's always hope. No, there isn't. But it doesn't matter. I'm a different person now. Searching for me? Yes. Lord Divish sent them, led by Captain Robard. So tell me, why is a lord of such high standing interested in a blacksmith? So Divish promised Sir Radzik he'd look after me. But as for why they should care, I've no idea. Oh, I'm exhausted. I'm not surprised. I'll bring you water and something to eat. In the meantime, rest. You're still very weak. Good morning to you. How's the invalid today? I oh, haven't felt as good as this since they lashed me to the wheel and quartered me on the town square. Got your sense of humour back. You must be better. My uncle will be glad to hear it. I had a job persuading him to let me bring you here. If you'd lain around much longer, he really would have dumped you on the town square. You can stay until you find somewhere else to live, but my uncle will want payment for taking you in and caring for you. And this is your uncle's house? We're in Rattay Mill. My uncle's Miller Peshek. He took me in, and I talked him into taking care of you too. I've been lying here long enough. Uncle will be pleased he's one mouth less to feed. But are you truly well enough? Well enough to do what has to be done. Where can I find Sir Radzig? He's in Lower Castle in Perkstein. He's a guest of Sir Hanish of Leiper. But someone like you can't just walk up bold as you please and demand an audience. I know, Sir Adzik, and I didn't bring him his sword as I was supposed to. I must see him. If you insist. But you need to speak to my uncle first. You've been in your sickbed for over a fortnight while he paid the apothecary to tend to you, and for medicine. That's a good deal of a coin you owe him. I've been lying here two weeks. My God. Better a fortnight in bed than an eternity in the grave. If it weren't for my uncle, you wouldn't be here at all. 
I owe you both my life, and I'll repay my debt. You have my word. All right, but before you go to town, you should eat something. You're still weak. There's food on the table for you. A word with you, young fellow. My name's Henry. Thank you for taking care of me here. My name's Peshek, and I'm the miller here. You've already met my niece, Teresa. She took care of you for two whole weeks while you were in limbo. And talking of you being at death's door, while you were lying here, you worked up quite a bill with the blood letter, who came now and again to keep you alive with his potions. That quack doesn't come cheap. I paid him what I could, but I still, that is, you still owe him. I see. Well, it's better to be in debt than to lie dead in a ditch. What do I owe? I'm not afraid of hard work. You won't pay for that shoveling manure. I might have a better job for you. And it's not something any fool can do. If you prove to me you're a clever lad, I might trust you with something you could really make money from. What do you say? Look, couldn't I just pay you instead? I'd say you're a fucking ungrateful pup. But if you think you got money to throw around, so be it. You'll pay me the costs and for a whole fortnight of my valuable time. That much? You're a usurer. But so be it. Here you are. Fine. A debt should be paid. But if you're interested in work, I still need that job done.
I'm not interested. Farewell. Take care now. May the Lord watch over you. Can you tell me something about the other millers? There's a couple of other fellows around here in my trade. Woodsick in Kohelnitz and Simon in Sasa. Tell me about Wojtek. He's young and hot-blooded with a short temper. But he's a fine fellow when you get to know him. His heart's in the right place and he's always willing to lend a helping hand. Unfortunately, he got himself into a feud with that usurer, the merchant Wolfram Pruder. A slimy bastard he is. And now they're sworn enemies. What about this Simon in Sassau? An odd one he is. A loner who don't talk much. But he's as dogged as a hunting hound once he gets his teeth into anything. He won't let go until he sees it through, even if he has to walk over dead bodies. Tell me something about yourself. There's nothing much to tell. I was born at the mill, I live here, and I'll surely die here. But before I do, I've plenty of work to do, and I hope I live to see peace in this land again. Can you tell me... What about the Scallets, folk? God sent them to punish us for our sins. They don't work, they just idle around begging. And you want to keep a close eye on your belongings when they're around. I'll be glad to see the back of them. What do you think about everything that's happened? I don't concern myself with the doings of my betters, but this mess isn't good for business. Them two brothers should sort things out between themselves without dragging us into it. I don't give a damn who's king, but that usurper from Hungary has gone too far. Do you know anything about those Cumans? The heathen scum that Sigismund brought here. Why do you even ask? You've seen with your own two eyes what they're capable of. That's all. Take care now. Try unlocking this trunk. Hold the lock thing in the right hand and use it to feel out. Got it? Good. Now turn the whole lock to play. Don't stop holding it. You're a dab hand half. Make something out of you yet. Remember, this trunk's only for practice. With real lots, you have to watch out for it. Have you eaten yet? Yes, it was very good. Did you bake it yourself? I did. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Henry, I'm so glad to see you. I'd like to know... So, how do you like it in Ratai? It's a big town with good strong walls, so I suppose we're safe here. And they took us in in our hour of need, but for how much longer? They'll grow tired of us soon enough. How are the Scallets folk getting on? They're alive, that's the main thing. They have shelter, but they're just scraping by. 
Rattay's citizens aren't happy the town is full of beggars who don't look like leaving any time soon. Do you know anything about those human rapists? About, you know? They came to Hungary from God knows where, and now they... Well, folk tell awful stories about them. I hope I never see them again. That's all. Have you got a moment? I'd like to ask a few questions about scallops. I don't remember much. All right. What do you want to know? How did you get me away from scallops? It wasn't easy. Sir Robard and his men helped load you on a wagon and we harnessed an old nag the bandits had left behind. The soldiers escorted us all the way here. God bless them. What about the bandits? Sir Robard and his men routed them. They killed the few, but the giant who attacked you fled, and Zibishek with him. It won't be safe in Scalitz for a while yet. Why would Zibishek do that? I never thought much of him, but banditry... He was always a nasty piece of work. It doesn't surprise me he joined them. If you knew what he did to me... Tell me. When those... Cumans, they call them. When the Cumans came, Zibishek pushed me out in front of them and fled. He sacrificed me to save his own hide. That bastard! Where's the sword I had? You had a sword? It's gone now. Those scum took everything, including your horse. I don't give a damn about the horse. I stole it anyway. But my father forged that sword for Sir Radzik. I promised father I'd take it to him. I have to get it back. Well, you can't. Just be thankful you're still alive. What happened to the other survivors from Scalitz? They sought refuge in Rattay. And some of the Rattay folk are none too happy about it. And Matthew, Fritz and Matthias? Johanka? Did they make it? They're alive. I heard Matthias is at the stud farm in Merhoyed. Johanka is in Sassau, and Fritz and Matthew, well, you know them. They're up to no good somewhere. The only trouble they'll be in is of their own making. What about Sir Radzig? Sir Hanush, he's the Lord of Rattay. He gave his lower castle to Sir Radzig, a place called Perkstein. Sir Hanush lives at the upper castle. The Scarlet's folk have made camp in front of it. How did you get away from those Cumans? You're wrong. If it hadn't been for you... When they came to the mill, they slaughtered everyone. And kept me for last. After you distracted them, I fled to the mines to find my brother. But he... My brother was dead. But I owe my life and more to you. And I owe mine to you. The scales are balanced. I won't trouble you anymore. Let's leave it be. What are you up to? How would you like to, um, I don't know, uh, come for a walk? A walk? I'd like that very much. But I can't right now, Hal. Give me some time to settle in, will you? If that's what you want. It's not you, Hal. It's just this isn't a good time. That job you wanted me to do, I won't do it. I pay both you and the apothecary, so we're even. You're an ungrateful pup, aren't you? Well, suit yourself. If you ever need anything, you know where not to go. Farewell. God be with you. My respects to you.
You've an honest trade. How come you got mixed up in crime? Evil times. The harvest failed, and there was no grain to mill, and a child to feed on top of it all. I had no choice. And meanwhile, the lords in the castle and the monks in the monastery stuffed their craws to bursting. Where's the justice in that? So you took justice into your own hands, is that it? And now you take whatever you need? Pull your head out of your ass, Henry. And take a good look around you. Wars come and go, but nothing really changes. It's the poor that do the dying, and the nobles who reap the rewards. We have to survive somehow, so why concern ourselves with morals? What am I to do with these things I pilfer? No one will buy stolen goods from me. Buying and selling stolen goods is a crime. But if they're worth something, I can make sure they're, uh, properly cared for. Not that I'd buy them from you, but I could, uh, store them for you. And you'll get some coin for, uh, taking care of them before. So if someone loses something, and I happen to find it, I can bring it to you to store, and I'll get Groschen for it. That's the arrangement. I've got some goods here whose owners might miss them. All right. Let's see what we can do about that. Farewell. Would you happen to have any work for me? Of course I would. And, surprise, surprise, it's another ring. Like last time. Properly done this time. Proper hard work. And who else to set the task to than you? The ring leader, so to speak. The thing is, one of the rich townsmen left his ring behind the last time he went to the baths for some winching. Too drunk to see it, no doubt. And now he wants it back, and the baths deny all knowledge. Why not turn to the bailiff? Why not? Because he doesn't want anyone to know about his bathhouse visits. And the girls in the baths are wary of selling the ring in case the bailiff does start looking for it after all. So we'll make life easier for them. What do you say? It's not that long ago I swore to go straight. Which means no thieving of any kind. <laughs> and when are you entering the convent? Well, if you change your mind, the ring is in the madam's treasure chest. And when you change your mind, bring it here. God be with you. Who are you and where are you going? I'm Henry, 
son of the Scallets blacksmith. I'm going to see my liege, Sir Radzig Kabila of Dvoyets. Of course you are, lad, and I'm the Pope. What do you want from his lordship, and what makes you think he'll see you? I may not look the part, but I know about honour and duty. And mine is to tell Sir Radzik what happened to the sword he commissioned. All right, then. Go ahead. It'll be your skin if Sir Radzik isn't pleased. What are you doing here? I took you for dead. Oh, it's a long story. But what about you? How did you get out of Scalitz? You wouldn't believe it. A frightful storm broke that night and Sigismund's heathens ran back to their camp. They never dreamed Sir Ratzik would use the storm as cover for our escape. The entire village slipped away as quiet as mice while no one watched. In the morning when those bandits attacked, all they found was an empty castle with an old goat inside. I wish I could have seen their faces. <laughs> so do I. You trick them nicely. See you later. God be with you. How does life in Ratai suit you? Well, them Ratai folk would rather drive us out of here. They won't give us no work, and they won't let us beg. So what are we supposed to do? This fucking war. Did you find out what actually happened? They say Sigismund is at war with the Czech lords and abducted the king. And our lord sides with Wenceslas. Good day to you. What do you need? How does life in Ratai suit you? I suppose it was kind of them to take us in. But then they just left us here to fend for ourselves. Nobody gives a damn about us. Did you find out what actually happened? Folks say it was on account of our silver and how Sir Radzig sided the king. Good luck to you. I'll give you something here. Thank you, good wife. Thank you. Psst. Come here, young fella. Good day to you. What are you hanging around for? Don't you have any work to do? No, I don't. Sigismund's marauders took everything I had and reduced me to beggary. What's it about? Since I lost everything, I've been doing whatever I could to survive. Only, I got caught with my hand in someone else's pocket. And since then, I can't even set foot on the square without the catchpoles pouncing on me. So you're a pickpocket? All right, get to the point. But keep your hands where I can see them. My honestly begged Russian were taken from me by that bastard of a guard, Pazdera. He claimed I stole them and took them for himself, the swine. Well, if you can get them from his pocket back into mine, where they rightfully belong, I'll give you a share and teach you a handy trick too. What do you say? I'm not a thief. Find someone else. A pot on you, your kin and all your descendants. Call yourself a Christian... Turning your back on a neighbour in need. God be with you.
Could that be the smith's son, Hal? On my soul, it is him. What are you doing here, lad? We thought you were done for. Bandits attacked me in Scalitz. And why, for God's sake, did you go back there? Who else but cutthroats and banders did you expect to find? I needed to bury my parents. Oh, I see. Your father fought like a lion. I'm sorry. He saved my life. And not just yours. He was a good man, and you did right to bury him. I didn't even manage that. I failed to save him or put him to rest. And just what could you have done at Scalitz? If you tried to fight, the both of you will be dead. He gave his life for yours, Hal. So you'd better make good use of it. You're right. And just what are you doing here? I must speak with Sir Radzik. Is he here? He's in the palace with Sir Hanush of Ratai. They're feasting in the knight's hall. What do you want with him? My father made him a sword. He, um... He asked me to deliver it to Sir Radzik. I don't see any sword. No. Bandits attacked me and stole it. I need to tell his lordship what happened. And then I'm going to find the sword. Of course you are, Hal. Good luck. Thanks. God be with you. And another thing. What about our Sir Radzig? Sir Hanush gave him the whole of Perkstein for his use. He seems to be bearing up well considering all he's lost. How do you like Ratai? Uh, it's well fortified and well situated. And they won't get us as easy here as they did in Scalitz. And there's everything a man could want. Armourer, swordsmith, apothecary, taverns. It could have turned out a lot worse. How are the Scalitz refugees faring? Oh, me and the rest of Sir Radzig's men are all right. We live at the castle and we've got everything we need. But the others are just making it day to day. And they've lost everything. It's charity and arms for them and the locals ain't as generous as they was. God knows how much longer we'll be stuck here. It ain't good. How do you like the new castle? It's a fine place. About the same size as Scalitz Castle. Sir Hanush don't mind lending it to Sir Radzig, because he's got an even bigger one at the other end of town. Have you ever seen a town with two castles before? Have you heard anything about those savages who attacked us? I heard they're called Cubans. Sigismund brought them here from Hungary. By all accounts, we got off lightly. They say, in other places, they impaled people on spikes, skinned them alive, and even worse... Fucking heathen swine. Thanks. God be with you. Your graces, I have to tell you in all seriousness that this land of ours is in the shit. Deep fucking shit. Don't you agree? I might not have put it as eloquently as you, Hanush, but I've been driven out of my own castle, so I'm hardly going to disagree. Indeed, but Birkstein is yours for as long as you need it. There's room enough for your men and you here at Ratte, and I'm sure my ward won't have any objection to me lending you his castle. I'd be honoured. Perkstein is at your disposal as long as you wish, Your Grace. Just as well you have another castle at the other end of town, eh? <laughs> uh, at any rate, I'm beholden to you, Sir Hans, and to you, Sir Hanosh. Mm. I don't like to speak ill of your people, Sir Radzik, but, well... There's no love lost between the townsfolk and the refugees. There's been talk of criminality. No, they'll have to get used to it until the situation's resolved. But when will it be resolved? And what on God's earth is this war even about? I won't lie, sir. I don't understand it. You aren't alone, father. 
I believe Sigismund's original intention was to persuade Wenceslas to accept the Imperial crown and to leave the rule of Bohemia to him. Well, who could blame him? I know Wenceslas is a friend of yours, Radzig, but even you have to admit he brought it upon himself. I can't deny the king neglected affairs of state for other pursuits. There is a need for order in the land, but I don't think the lords who sided with Sigismund realized just what Hungarian order looks like. <laughs> Hungarian order. <laughs> What concerns me, sir, is how a good Christian could resort to such brutality. To give him his due, I don't think he expected the lords of this country to stand behind the king. But thanks to him, we're tearing ourselves apart, and now he has to get things under control. But why in God's name does he have to use those barbarians? Money is the root of all evil, young sir. Wars are costly, and this one has dragged on for a year. Sigismund ran out of coin for knights, so he recruited those whore sons that settled in Hungary. The less he pays, the more they make up for it with plunder. That's why he attacked us. He was after our silver. What are you doing? You've no business here. Clear off. Wait, it's Henry. Henry, who disappeared after I clearly ordered him to remain at Taunberg. I'm sorry, sir, but I had to bury my parents. Had to? Do you think you were the only man who lost someone there? But the others listened to their lord. And it wasn't just your own life you nearly threw away. So Robard and his men risked theirs to save you. I'm sorry, but I had to. No, oh, there you go. When you have to, you have to, Radzik. <laughs> your father was a remarkable man. And your mother, she was remarkable too. They deserved a Christian burial. Did you manage that at least? No. I was attacked by thieves. I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for that girl. Girl? The miller's daughter, Teresa. <coughs> the miller's daughter saved you from the footpads? Well, there's a tale to tell your children. Uh, I owe my life. She distracted them and then brought me to Ratai. But without Sir Robard, we'd both be dead. Well, that's what I call a good woman. Hang on to that one, lad. Still. It's a great shame your parents are buried in unconsecrated ground. That means purgatory for them. Be quiet, friar. I didn't invite you here to eat me out of house and home and deliver a sermon while you were doing it. If you're so concerned, Father, maybe you should save the innocent souls of these fine Christians yourself. Go to Scalitz and consecrate their graves. I assure you, if you're killed by bandits, your soul will soar straight to heaven. As long as someone buries you in consecrated ground first, if there's anything left to bury, that plump carcass of yours would be quite a feast for the wolves and the crows. And one skeleton looks much like another, so how would we know which were your ordained bones or those of Sigismund's Tartars? Be that as it may, why have you come here? I must get your sword back. Sword? My sword hangs here at my side. No, the sword my father forged for you. One of those thieves stole it from me. They almost killed him and he already wants to go back. Takes after his father, I suppose. Lad, I've lost a castle, a village, silver mines and a good half of my subjects. Why would I miss one sword? Because it's the last one my father forged and I promised him I'd deliver it to you. I understand. I'd feel the same way. But prudence is the better part of valour. And a dead man keeps no promises. Aye. The woman had to save his fat from the fire, and now he wants revenge. What kind of fool are you, boy? He's no fool. Henry, you have courage, but you need training, arms, a horse. Or do you mean to beat this thief at dice? No, sir. Please, take me into your service and give me the chance to learn these things. The gall of him! Fled from the enemy, disobeyed your orders, duped Sir Divish, lost your sword, put Sir Robard in danger with his actions, and now he wants a promotion. Sir Capon's right. What you say is certainly true, except for fleeing the enemy. You would have run as well, believe me. Henry's earned some punishment, but how do you punish someone who's already lost everything, hmm? Courage and blind obedience are good qualities for a soldier, but a wise man also appreciates loyalty, perseverance and determination. Besides, that was a fine sword that his father made. If he thinks he can get it back, I won't turn it down. My lord, he's a peasant. 
You can't make a squire of a peasant. Why not? Someone made a priest of a pig. He isn't a peasant, father. He's a blacksmith. And recent events have left me in need of his skills. So, you'd like to enter my service? Sir, I... Yes, I would. You won't regret it. <laughs> oh, I probably will. I'm doing this for your father, lad. Don't disappoint me. Oh, fortune has finally smiled on you today, lad. Make the most of it. Now that I think about it, Sir Hanush, the boy needs training and experience, and you need spear carriers. That's true. The bailiff is always complaining about your people making trouble in the camp. Maybe one of their own among the guard might help. It might. In any event, it will prove valuable experience. <laughs> but let's be clear. You're the one paying him. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Bernard, see to his training, and then send him to the bailiff. Yes, sir. And don't spare him. You can rely on it, sir. Don't forget, Henry. Don't disappoint me. I won't, my lord. And another thing. Have you met the local lord? Sir Hanush? Of course. He's a jovial sort and doesn't know what fear is. What about the captain of the garrison? What's he like? Sir Bernard. A grouchy old bastard. He don't care much for us. I'd like to shove a stick up his ass, Or take out the one that's already there. And Sir Hans Capon? Have you seen him? Aye, I saw him. And for a young fellow, he was as drunk as... Well, as a lord. Which he is, of course. All of this here belongs to him, so he can do as he damn well pleases. I reckon I'd do the same in his shoes. Thanks. God be with you. I wouldn't beg good neighbours. I'm not but surprised. I'm Betty was always good with her hands. You're right. Good day to you. What kind of governor is Sir Hanush? Sir Hanush is a good lord. Things won't be the same when that wastrel Sir Hans takes over. That will be a sorry day. What's life like in Ratai? We've got sturdy walls and two castles to protect us. There's not many towns of that. And we've got everything we need here. We've got an apothecary, a swordsmith, an armourer. We've got a beautiful church and a fine alehouses. How do the Ratai folk get on with the refugees? Well... They have it tough, no doubt, but there's not enough room for them here. How much longer will they be living on our streets? Nothing good will come of this. What if one of them's brought the plague with them? Have you heard anything about the Cumans in Sigismund's army? Don't talk to me about that fucking rabble. A soldier was saying in the alehouse them barbarians impale people on spikes, rape women. They hold nothing sacred, the filthy heathens. Are you the brawler who takes bets? What's it to you? I'm a Scalitz refugee and I'd like to try my luck against you. Hang on, I know who you are. And I'll only fight you for silver, got it? Why for silver? Do I really have to tell you? 
Look at yourself and then look at the others. All they've got to wager is their labour. But you, you've got coin. Are there any rules? Aye, a couple. Whoever lands on his arse or runs, loses. And no knives, axes or any of that shit. You'll forfeit your wager for that, got it? All right, let's fight then, if you think you can take me. Hold your horses, laddie. First, you have to prove you're a worthy opponent for me by beating two other regular brawlers, Stephen and a fellow they call Ringlet. Take care now. See you survived. Aren't you observant? You still owe me. Don't think I've forgotten. I don't owe you. I owe your father, and he's dead. So get out of here. You can't avoid this forever, you know. You just won't give me a break, will you? Fine. I owe you. And what am I supposed to do about it? You think you'll get anything from me? Look at what I've got! But maybe I could... Maybe I could tell you where you can find some money. If you forgive my debt, that is. All right, then. Start talking. No. First, I want you to swear you won't be demanding anything else from me. Very well, then. Talk. When we were running from Scalettes, I heard something. I don't know who said it. It's a miracle I could even hear it in that chaos. Either way, somebody hid a lot of coin under a dovecote. Under a dovecote? And that's it? That's all I know. How many dovecots could there be in Scalettes? If you've got the guts to go back there, you're bound to find it. Fine. We'll see. Pity on me, a poor... Bait goods fresh from the oven. God be Come with you, good sir. Take care now. Jesus Christ be praised. What kind of governor is Sir Hanesh? He's straight, but just. Thank God for him. You don't get mixed up in nothing like that, so that's it. Make you so you don't see happy. no one attacking Onions us. that'll make you cry and garlic that'll keep like evil right. spirits at bay. Well, life's good here. Even better if them damn refugees would only vanish. Flour, egg, How do the Ratai folk yeast. get on with the refugees? Let it bake a bit and you'll be able to feed Pat, the whole family with fresh it. bread. I wish that rubble was gone. I know they've met with misfortune, but here they do nothing but thieve and make problems. Have you heard anything about the Cumans in Sigismund's army? I don't know if it's just all wild bread. tales, Come and get it. but I heard true Man cannot live things. by bread alone, but he can't live without it either. God be with you. <laughs> Good day to you. What do you need? Take care now. Good health to you. May the Lord watch over you. <laughs> Was there much in it? Oh,
God be with you. Do you need anything? How does life in Ratai suit you? It would be fine if we didn't have to sleep in hovels and beg for alms. And the bailiff is always on our backs, the bastard. But what can we do? We've got nowhere else to go. Did you find out what actually happened? What do I know? The lords are at each other's throats, but it's us that has to suffer for it. Same as always. I reckon they was after the silver mines, wasn't they? Goodbye. God be with you. What can I do for you? How does life in Ratai suit you? I suppose it was kind of them to take us in. But then they just left us to fend for ourselves. Nobody gives a damn about us. Did you find out what actually happened? Folks say it was on account of her silver and how Sir Radzik sides with the king. God bless. Good day to you. What do you need? Take care. Good day to you. What do you need? Can I ask... What kind of a lord is Sir Hanush? I can't complain. He knows how to keep order, but he does it with good humor. What do you think of Sir Radzig? I hear he's on good terms with the king. Probably why Sir Hanush opened the door to him. Sir Radzig seems like a fair man, and folks say he's a good governor. What's young Lord Capon like? He'll be the governor here in a few years. Sir Hanush is just his guardian until he comes of age. The young lord spends most of his time making merry. But he'll grow out of it. He's no fool. What's life like in Ratai? Till Sigismund came and then you folk, it was a fine peaceful life here. What will become of the Scalitz refugees? I'd like to know the answer to that myself. I hope things can settle down quick, and you lot can clear off. Perkstein is a fine castle. It'll be even finer once you all clear out, and I can move back into my chambers. Do you know who those soldiers of Sigismund's are, Captain? They call them Cumans or Kipchaks. Our lord says they fled from the Mongols to Hungary and settled there. They're herdsmen and excellent horsemen, and barbarians, too. For all that they claim, they've turned to Christ. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. I'm here for training. Yes, you're that boy Sir Radzik sent. Yes, that's me. Let's get to it then, since that's what Sir Radzik wishes. Uh, and because you've never held a sword in your hand before, we'll start with something simpler. My father was a blacksmith, so I've learned a thing or two. Fine. We'll try something more advanced then. Farewell. Very well then. Let's see what you're made of, lad. Come at me and don't hold back. Good strike. Yeah. Ugh. 
Ow. Fine, enough. You're not a complete dead loss. It'll be hard work to turn you into a master, but you have the basics. Let's try something more advanced. When in combat, keep an eye on the space between you and your opponent. That is your space. Try to attack from the side the opponent will find harder to block in time. If I'm holding the sword raised up, do an uppercut. If my sword is low, lunge. Let's try it. You strike a few times at the side where I'm not holding my sword. Ah, good. Ah. Very good. Not bad. Ah, that's it. All right. Right. Lesson two. Everything you've learned about blocking is wrong. When I cover, I can simply fend off your blows with my sword and gain control of the space between us. But it's better not to control just the space, but actually your opponent's weapon. Attack, and I'll show you. All right, that will do. Now you. The trick is to stay in your stance. As soon as I start to attack, you block. The move knocks the blade aside. Try it a little faster. Concentrate and block just at the moment I start attacking. I'll strike you from above each time so you can see it well. Nice! Ah, uh. uh, that's it! Good, good. Now let's try it at full speed. You probably won't succeed, but that's normal at the start. You must train. Let's go. Sir Hans, what brings you here? I was on my way when I noticed that you're entertaining Sir Radzig's esteemed guest. Not the same as holding a hammer, is it, blacksmith? It's Sir Radzig's orders. I know. I'm actually here to train at the archery range. My hand's grown heavy lately. You don't mind, do you, Bernard? Not at all, my lord. Good day to you, blacksmith's boy. Try not to hurt yourself. Where did we finish? Yeah, leading the opponent where you want him. There's one more way to evade a strike. 
You simply step aside, attack, and I'll show you. What are you waiting for? All right, try it. It's important not to move too soon. I'll see where you're going and hit you. That the same will happen if you move too late. I'll attack slowly now. As you see me, raise the weapon, jump aside. It'll throw the opponent off a bit, and there's your chance. quicker. Try and get used to the rhythm. Never take your eyes off your opponent. You'll see a strike before it's even properly started. All right. Very good. Ah, that's it. And the last thing for today, a trick. You raise the sword to force your opponent to block, but then change the direction of the attack at the last moment, and the opponent won't even know what hit him. Try it. Draw back the weapon, then change the attack zone and strike, so I don't have time to react. No, that's not it! Not like that! Very good! Well done! All right! Ah, that's it! Very good! Well now, that wasn't too bad. Maybe we'll make a soldier of you after all. But don't get cocky. You have to train hard and persistently. You might have talent, but talent alone won't do. Practice. Whenever you've got nothing better to do and you're in the mood for it, you can come and train here with me. I can teach you something more when you're up to it. Don't leave yet. Sir Radzig also wanted me to teach you archery. Come with me. Watch over you.
do with folk? Skull it lies at wood. Let's see then. Take this bow, go and stand in position over there, and we can start. And another thing, put on this arm guard. Without it, you could flay your forearm with a bowstring, so be sure to wear it. Thank you, Captain. Save the thanks, and get in position. Now concentrate. A bow ain't exactly the weapon of choice of a knight, but it can come in very handy. You've got two bandits coming at you from a distance. You shoot one in the eye, drop your bow, and draw your sword on the other. Emperor Charles, God rest him, encouraged Where his subjects to learn archery. Don't. He even organized contests in Prague. But you wouldn't have gotten far there. You're holding the thing like a piece of firewood. But enough talk. There's the target. Try and hit it. Has draw anyone told you you're supposed to shoot release. at the Try top. to get a feel for the rhythm. Inhale on the draw. Hold your breath for a moment, and then release the string. No jerky movements, just let the string slide out of your fingers, as if you were about to draw it back more. All one movement, the arrow aiming at the target and flying at it. Shoot away. What you have there is a training Where are you the shooting? Arrow drops quickly. Don't. Once you've trained a bit, you can get yourself a better one, and then those arrows will fly so fast you won't see them. Don't forget the arm guard. Once you've mastered the bow a bit, you won't need it anymore. That's it, then. I don't like to say it, but it wasn't that bad. I don't know why you're wasting your time, Sivanov. Nothing will come of him anyway, and at the first sign of trouble, he'll run away like any other cowardly peasant. After all, he's done it before. What did you say? Calm down, boy. Keep in mind who you're talking to. The braggart who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Now you've really done it. You'll go to the stocks for that. Calm yourself, Sir Bernard. If the blacksmith's boy feels he can prove himself, then let him try. Do you think you can beat me? Well, any time. Very well. If you defeat me, I'll give you my bow. If you lose, you'll have to pay up. Do you even have any coin? I have enough. Good, then let's get to it. I didn't expect that. Probably just wasn't your day, sir. I told you I have a heavy hand, ever since I fell off that horse during the last hunt. What are you grinning about, boy? I think you owe me a little payback. How about a sword fight at the arena? If you like. Sir Hans, is this necessary? Sir Hanish has already had words about you fighting with your subjects. He explicitly told me. I know what he told you. You can just tell him I didn't listen to you. So what's it going to be, blacksmith? If we must. Excellent. Then let's go. Oh! 
Stop her, Dylan. Well, you got the better of me this time, blacksmith. I must be having an off day. Are you all right, sir? Don't worry your mangy head about me, peasant. We'll see each other again soon enough. You can keep my bow. Best years are behind it anyway. Hmm. You better hope his lordship hasn't taken it badly. He shouldn't have challenged me. Careful. You might be under Sir Adzik's protection, but you'd be wise to stay on good terms with the other noblemen, too. Now, go to the Rat House. The bailiff's waiting for you there. All right, Captain. God be with you. How does life in Ratai suit you? It'd be fine if we didn't have to sleep in hovels and beg for arms. And the bailiff is always on our backs. Bastard. But what can we do? We've got nowhere else to go. Did you find out what actually happened? What do I know? The lords are at each other's throats. But it's us that has to suffer for it, same as always. I reckon they was after the silver mines, wasn't they? Take care now.
My respects to you. Have you heard anything about the Cumans in Sigismund's army? Everywhere they go, they pillage, rape, and slaughter. Oh, so the tales have it. Of course, all armies do that. But them barbarians take pleasure in it. Good luck to you. Let's have a word about the price. Why not? Aye, that would do it. Heavens, lad. You're looking bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Last time I saw you, I thought you were ready for the priest. I'm feeling as good as new. Well, I'm glad to hear it. About that debt. Here you are. Thank you. I'm glad to see you're a man of honour. Is there anything else I can do for you? I want to learn to read. Who should I go and see? There's a retired scribe in Ushitz. He could teach you. What's life like in Ratai? Life is good here. By God's mercy, the war's passed us by so far. There's nothing but them refugees to disturb the peace. Family, the livelihood, people. God be with you. What kind of governor is Sir Hanush? Young Sir Hans is our governor, but Sir Hanush is his guardian till he comes of age. That's not a day I'm looking forward to. What's life like in Ratai? This is a manorial town, and our lord hasn't got himself tangled up in affairs of state, so it's peaceful here. How do the Ratai folk get on with the refugees? I know they got nowhere to go. Scalitz is a pile of ashes and the countryside ain't safe. But they've been here too long. Some of those buggers got light fingers. And not a one of them appreciates the sacrifices we made for them. I'm to put myself under the bailiff's command. 
Ah, so you're the young man Sir Radzig appointed? Yes. Very well. Sir Radzig asked me to test you a little, and as it happens, you've come at the right time. We've a few disputes to settle. It seems some of your former neighbors have been acting quite inappropriately. I was hoping having one of their own on the town watch might help sort things out. You can count on me, Bailiff. You're certainly bold. I like that. Have you been to see Captain Bernard? I have. He trained me and then Sir Hans Capon challenged me to a duel. I see. Sir Hans Capon likes to measure his strength against others. But be careful, Henry. Noblemen are quick to anger, and you don't need that kind of trouble. Well, anyway, you're going to assist my town guard. Come to the church in the afternoon. Yaroslav the Watchman, Nightingale they call him, will wait for you there. He'll show you around the town and teach you a little about keeping the peace. And you need to stop by the armory to pick up some gear. Yes, Bailiff. Master Bailiff, is there anything of interest going on here? Nothing of interest to me, thank Christ. God be with you. You're after something here, tell me. I was told to pick up a kit here. Name? Henry. And? In fealty to? Sir Radzik Kobola. Hmm. Yes, I've got you. Well, come on in then. Make yourself at home, Henry. If my memory serves me, you're entitled to a helmet, a gambeson, and a club. That's all? You want a kiss and a hug as well? I mean equipment. It's quite enough for patrolling the town. You're there to stop trouble, not start it. God be with you. Any work for me here by any chance? That depends. How's your hearing? What? I said, how's your hearing? It's perfectly fine. You don't have to scream at me. I mean, why are you asking? Because there is this one little job going. But I need someone who knows the area well and has good ears. I ought to be able to handle that. Fine. 
So here's the problem. My friend is a birder, and he left a few rare nightingales with me for safekeeping. They're good to trade. Rich gentlemen hang them caged up in their chambers. It keeps their wives from fretting when they're off drinking and wenching. I see. The trouble is, the nightingales are gone. I don't know how, but the birds have flown. Hang on, surely you're not asking me to go flapping around looking for birds? Not exactly. Luckily, their wings are clipped, so they won't be far, and the watchman in the tower told me they headed off toward Vranik. I have traps prepared. It should be easy enough to catch them in those. Fine, but how will I know where to put the traps? I hear they like pine woods, and there's a pine-covered hill just before Vranik. <sighs> right, a bloody great wood. That's just why you need to listen out. Nightingales have a distinctive song. When you hear it close by, you set a trap on the spot. They kept twittering away the whole time they were here, so I can remember the tunes. I'll sing them to you. I can't wait. It went something like this. What? People keep birds like that in their houses. It's like the sound a cat makes when you pull it by the tail. You know how it is. The gentry's got all manner of odd tastes. The question is, can you remember it? Yes, I'll remember. Right, here are the traps. Don't forget, once you hear a nightingale, set a trap nearby. He ought to be caught in it after a while. I'll do that. God be with you. God be with you. Take care now. Saya potom saya k mojej milej navrát.
Who's that?
Who's there? Answer me. What in the... Good day to you. Aren't you Ringlet? Milan says I have to beat you before he'll take me on. And you're that blacksmith's lad, right? What do you want out of it? You're not living in the dirt here like the rest of us. Maybe not. But why shouldn't I try and beat some coin out of him too? Yeah, and you can pass it on to us that need it. If you want to fight me, you dandy, then pay up. Or fuck off. Good luck to you.
be. I want to sleep. God be with you. Good luck to you. God be with you. You're Stephen, aren't you? Milan tells me he won't fight me until I beat you. Oh, yeah? And why would you want to? Well, never mind. I'll fight you if you pay me. What do you say? God be with you.
Implements, instruments, and tools. A tournament in which the bravest men in the whole province match their strength and skill. A tournament that never lacks in Any chance of some work here, Captain? It all depends on what you're ready to do, my lad. As I'm sure you've noticed, the roads around here are swarming with brigands. Sir Hanush has declared quite a reward for dealing with them. So what do you think I should do about them? We know about one of their encampments. It's to the east of Ratai in an abandoned mine. I don't really mind how you deal with them. Anyway, the leaders generally wear spurs, maybe like they're pretending they're nobility. Who cares? In any case... Bring me the spurs, and I'll take it as proof that the deed's done. Very well. I'll see to it. Wait. In addition, Sir Hanush has offered a reward for every bandit who's killed. So take a good sharp dagger. You'll get a bit extra for each ear you bring. Very well. That sounds amusing. Well, as for amusement, I'd entertain myself by being very careful, lad. Can you teach me how to defend myself better in combat? Certainly. Well, I think... I think I've mastered the basics of combat. Could you teach me something a bit more advanced? I see. And what weapon are you such a master at? I'm pretty good with a sword. Well, go and train some more. When you really got some skill, come back to me and I might teach you something more. Can you teach me how to defend myself better in combat? Certainly. I'd like to practice the basics. All right, but it'll cost you. Isn't that quite a lot? What about this? That's not enough. Agree. Now, listen up. I think I've mastered the basics of combat. Could you teach me something a bit more advanced? I see. And what weapon are you such a master at? I'm pretty good with a sword. Well, go and train some more. When you really got some skill, come back to me and I might teach you something more. I'd like to train, but I want real combat with real weapons. A bit cocky, ain't you? But all right. I like a man with a bit of piss and vinegar in him. I never learn as much with a wooden sword as with a real weapon. 
The old master swordsman says a true apprentice of the martial arts should be wounded at least once. Some say he should even try what it's like to die. But that's blasphemy. Let's fight, then. Have no fear. I won't kill you. But you might get hurt, and if you do, I won't bandage you. You'll have to deal with the consequences yourself. What weapon will you try? I still don't feel entirely competent with the bastard sword. I'd like to try that. Right, lad. Grab your piece, and we'll get stuck in. You asked for it. Oh, hi, you. Ah! Uh. 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 
Done for. I think I've mastered the basics of combat. Could you teach me something a bit more advanced? I see. And what weapon are you such a master at? I'm pretty good with a sword. You're a bit cocky, ain't you? All right, then. Let's see what you can do. If you're as good as you think you are, I'll teach you some master strikes. I'm ready. There, take your weapon and fight. If you look like you know what you're doing, I'll teach you a trick or two. Ah! 
Enough. That will do. That wasn't at all bad. All right. It seems you're ready for the next lesson. Now, pay close attention. I'll teach you the most important thing. It's good to be able to attack. It's good to be able to fend off your opponent's blows. The best is when you're able to do both at once. A master stroke is when you parry your opponent's blow and strike him at the same time. Attack me, and I'll show you how it's done. See? I parry and strike in one move. There's no defense against this technique if it's executed well. The thing is to time it right. Lock right into your opponent's strike and match your movement to his. One elegant technique, and the fight is won. Try it. I'll attack slowly. You parry. Good. Good. Well done. I'd like to train, but I want real combat with real weapons. A bit cocky, ain't you? But all right. I like a man with a bit of piss and vinegar in him. I never learn as much with a wooden sword as with a real weapon. The old master swordsman says a true apprentice of the martial arts should be wounded at least once. Some say he should even try what it's like to die. But that's blasphemy. Let's fight, then. Have no fear. I won't kill you. But you might get hurt, and if you do, I won't bandage you. You'll have to deal with the consequences yourself. What weapon will you try? I still don't feel entirely competent with the bastard sword. I'd like to try that. Right, lad. Grab your piece, and we'll get stuck in. What's up? Shit yourself? Oh. <sighs> 
Strike, you'll need it. Get me. hurt your opponent. It's no use just flailing at him and hoping you get lucky. You need technique, but using skilled moves is no easy matter. There's no miraculous strikes you can learn that will ensure you win every duel. You've got to work those techniques into your combat. 
force your opponent into a position you want him in, and then attack unexpectedly. Ow! See? I strike from overhead, then slash from the side, and backswing low down. So you expect me to strike from below, but then I turn the sword and strike you with the other side. Once more, defend. Now, you try it. Strike from above, then from the right, then slash. The strikes have to follow quickly, one after the other. As soon as one lands, you start the next. You have to keep exactly to the sequence, otherwise it won't come off. Slash from above, slash from the right, slash from below. Go! No, no, no! You have to strike me three times! Three times! No, no, no! You have to strike me three times! Three times! That's it! Try it once more! That's it! Try it once more! Good. Again. All right. You can learn lots of similar techniques with every weapon. Train and practice. Up, Billy, yeah. That's fine. You gave those two a pretty good hiding, and I made a grosh the two in bets. You Scalix fellows are good for my purse. Take care now.
God be with you, lad. What can I do for you? What are the rules of the tournament? Is there anything I should watch out for? Well, it's not a life or death struggle. We're not barbarians, after all. Anything in particular you'd like to know? How long does it go on? All day long. The combatants have to go through several tough bouts before the outcome is decided. Usually the victor is announced before sunset, but it's not unheard of for duels to drag out until nightfall. How many rounds do I have to win to become the final victor? Depends how many people enroll. Today comes out of three rounds. The combatants who win the first round go through to the second, and the winners of the second will fight each other in the final duel. What are the rules of combat? The tourney is for commoners, but that doesn't mean chivalrous behaviour doesn't apply. Anyone who leaves the arena before the winner is announced forfeits the duel. If you strike an opponent who is yielded, he'll be disqualified too. And what do I have to do to win? Do I have to beat the opponent every time, or do I get several tries? To get to the second round, you have to beat your opponent twice in the first one. If both opponents win one bout each in the round, the victor is decided in a third duel. Whoever wins that one goes on to the next round. What kind of weapons are used in the tourney? You can take your pick. In the first two duels, that is. If a third duel is needed to decide the matter, Sir Hanish chooses the weapon. Can I borrow weapons and armour here? Not only can you, you have to. This is about fighting skill, not about who's got the best kit. So you and your opponent get the same. There's equipment prepared for all the combatants. As soon as you sign up, you'll have armour and weapons prepared for you too. Thanks. That's all I need to know. I'd like to ask again about the rules of the tourney. Thanks. That's all I need to know. Can I wait here until the next tourney starts? By all means. You can stay at the castle along with the other combatants. You can stay here until the next tourney for low rent. You'll get bed and board, like in any good inn. Sounds good. I'll consider it. I'd like to enrol in the big tournament. All right. As long as you've got the enrolment stake, Sir Hanish's rule is every contestant has to put up three score groschen. Of course. Here you are. What's your name? I'm Henry, from Scallops. I'll make a note of that. And I need to know what weapon you choose. Longsword. I reckon it's what I'm best at. Good. Get yourself ready. You're next in line. Good luck to you. Meeting face to face in this round will be Henry of Scalitz from the company of Sir Ratze Kobla. And he will face Alder Friar, a man at arms from Sir Divish of Townboat's garrison. Welcome, our warriors. All is prepared for the first duel. We will witness a duel with longswords.
The second bout will surely be no less exciting. This one may decide the winner. Prepare to watch a fierce fight with axes and shields. victorious, he shall proceed to the next round of the Ratai Tournay. <laughs> Meeting face to face in this round will be Stephen of Dvoretz, spearman in the company of Sir Radzik Kobilar. And his adversary will be Henry of Skelets, from the company of Sir Radzai Kabla. Let us wish the combatants luck. And this very first bout will afford plenty of entertainment. We will witness a duel with long swords. <laughs> Damn. 
What's the matter? Lost your balls? Peace. Kurva fix. And now's the time to choose weapons for the next duel. Our combatants will demonstrate their skills with short sword and shield. Go ahead and gather your strength. You'll need it. in this round and emerge victorious, he shall proceed to the next round of the Ratai Tournay.
Meeting face to face in this round will be the victor of many previous tournees and a combatant today too, Peter, called Black Peter. And he will face Henry of Skullets from the company of Sir Ratsay Kabbalah. Let us wish the combatants luck. All is prepared for the first duel. We will witness a duel with long swords. Had enough. weapons for the second bout. Our warriors will fight with hunting swords.
Zahanish, God bless him, has chosen the weapons for the third jewel. Our combinants will demonstrate their skills with short sword and shield. Good wives, you have just witnessed the final jewel in today's Ratai Tournay, for which we all owe gratitude to Sir Hanush of Lipa. All glory to the victor, Henry of Skelets, man at arms in the company of Sir Radzi Kobila. His prize will be given to him by our gracious Sir Hanush. Thank you. Thank you so much. You burned it. God be with you. health to you. Can you teach me how to defend myself better in combat? Certainly. I'm interested in more advanced techniques. All right, but it... Isn't that quite... Agreed. Now listen up. I'll be with you. I'd like to improve my swordsmanship. Certainly. I'd like to practice the basics. All right. Isn't that quite... Agreed. Now, I'll be with you. I'd like to improve my swordsmanship. Certainly. I'm interested in more advanced techniques. All right. Isn't that quite a lot? Agreed. Good luck to you.
I'd like to learn to fight better with an axe. Certainly. I'd like to practice. All right. Isn't that cool? Agreed. Here I am. My name is Henry. We're supposed to go on patrol together? You report for duty dressed like that? I've got nothing better to do. You'd look more frightening with a pitchfork. Go and get kitted out first. I'll get by like this. If you insist, but don't blame me if you get laughed at. I'm Nightingale. Aren't you that lad the mill went brought here on a card? Teresa. Yes, she rescued me. She turned up with Captain Robot and his knights. All honor to the girl. She has bigger balls than most men. Tell me, how did you pay her back? Well, I um I thanked her. That's not much, is it? You should go and see her when you get a chance. So how did you end up in the service of the bailiff? I don't want to be kicking around in the dirt while other men do honest work. You're an eager one, aren't you? Come with me, Henry. We'll patrol the town and then check on the taverns to make sure they lock up in the evening. I'm ready. Don't forget... I'm supposed to try you out and, with the help of God, teach you something. So I expect you to deal with any misconduct yourself. I'll make sure you don't do anything too stupid. Let's go. This is our church, St. Matthew's. God, but as the crypt of the Lords of Lipa, our masters. The grave digger lived right round the corner, the priest too, our parish priest. Ah, a man shouldn't speak ill about servants of the Lord. This is our rat house. Pretty big, eh? And our maestro proto notarius, the scribe. And the jailhouse. You don't want to see the inside, not even as a guard. 
Naturally, we have an execution or two, but he doesn't live in town. That wouldn't be proper, as I'm sure you know. I know. He lives by Gallows Hill, the other side of the creek. This pillory was brand new in autumn, and two people have already been rotting on it. Mixed goods, handy implements, and machines of every... What the hell is going on here now? Just run along go and, and check it out, Henry. For you. If you won't go to the... Ch what are you two screeching about? Stop making such a ruckus. About time you turned up. This filthy beggar thinks. My name is Jane. No one cares what your name is. This filthy beggar thinks she can come and stink in front of my shop. I want you to get rid of her. What's the problem here? This is my shop, and I won't have beggars sitting on my doorstep. Let her go and squat in the square. She won't be in anyone's way there, and there's plenty of folk to beg from. Must you sit here, of all places? Yes, I do. Why? Folk drive me away wherever I sit. I can't keep walking all day and night. Can't you show us some Christian charity, Armour? What? Have you any idea how much I've given away in alms, even to this witch only yesterday? Is that true? Might be. Might not. Did you get any arms or not? Yes. From the armourer here? I don't know. And even if I did, that was yesterday, and my belly's empty again today. And that's true. What would you know about it? We're both good Christians, aren't we? We should each give something to the poor soul. And what then? Then Jane will be on her way. Immediately. King Solomon now, are you, lad? Fine. Fine, have it your way. God bless you, and and you too, citizen. I won't be a nuisance no more, really. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus. You're as bad as each other. Your old neighbours are living here now. It's a bit of a shithole. Even so, you should be thankful for the Hanush. If the town burghers got their way, your folk wouldn't be let anywhere near the town. And now our people aren't too happy with him. Some fools are even calling for Zahanush to finally hand the fiefdom over to the young lord, Sir Hans Capon. Sir Hans's father, old Sir Yeshke, may God rest his soul, kept it till he was an old man. Then he retired from it, first to Moravia, then to eternity. Sir Hanush is managing the fiefdom until Sir Hans comes of age. They're related by blood somehow, the same great-great-grandfather or some such. The time's coming soon enough when the estates have to be handed over. These affairs often end in conflict. I hope we have nothing like that here. One more time, so you don't miss anything. We 
We've also got the baker's shop here, and that mad merchant, Wolfram Kruger. Kruger has a pretty daughter, but he keeps her on a short range, which the young bucks are none too happy about. I heard he keeps the poor lad locked up at home all day. There's one alehouse here on the market square, the Trader's Tavern. The other's up by the gate. We'll be going there later. Us? What do you mean? You and your master, or your father, whoever taught you. They... What is it, lad? My father was the master blacksmith. He was killed in Scullets. Ah, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Thank you. So am I. My papa died not long ago. Of course, it was old age got him. That's not the same, but I know a little how you feel. Master Smill is in charge of Sir Haddish's stable. He's my father, best castle. Ah. It's all a bit complicated for a newcomer, I suppose. This lord here, that lord there, this exemption here, that right there. Exemptions from exemptions, rights to half of something, so on. It'll take you a year to make head or tail of it. This tower was only half the size when I was a young lad. Sir Hanush had it extended and made into an armory. Good day to you. Farewell. I live like you did till Scalix was burned to ashes. Moimir, anyway. Isn't he supposed to be here with you? Ah, yes. He hasn't turned up yet. Oh, I see. You don't know, eh? Let me tell you something. When the bailiff finds out Moimir's slacking off, he'll be in serious shit. And being a friend of his, you wouldn't want that, would you? No. So it's better if I deal with it and we leave the bailiff out of it, right? Um, yes, I suppose so. So where is he? Uh, in the tavern. He was thirsty, so he... Went for an ale. We know how that goes. Come on, Henry. Let's go and find that idler, and you'd better talk some sense into him.
You better put that weapon away or you'll be awesome. What the fuck are you doing here when you're supposed to be on the gate? Nah. Move your carcass and go and guard the gate. Uh, I... Not a word. Get moving. You're lucky it was me found out, not the bailiff, or God forbid, Captain Bernard. Out! Come and sit with me. Let's have a drink. That fool got me all worked up. Me as well, the lazy bastard. My words exactly, and just when we need every pair of eyes. You never know when the Cumans might creep up on us. But that's enough about that. Let's not let it spoil our day. Listen, since we're sitting here anyway, how about a little game? Why not? We'll see whose side Lady Duck is on. That's it. We'll see. Now you. Sakura! I can't believe it! Just one more thing and we're done for the night. Ringing the end of the day and... Closing the taverns. Isn't it still a bit early? I don't know how it was in Scarlet, but here in Rate we close up at this hour. Except, of course, during fairs and big festivals. Then we don't close at all. I see. Should I go and ring the bell? If you wouldn't mind, the bell is hanging outside the Rat House. Ring three times, then go to the Trader's Tavern by the Market Square and make sure the innkeeper closes up. I'll do that. Before I forget, it's forbidden to walk in Rate at night without a torch. Here, take this one. I could die of shame to be reduced to begging. But what am I to do, good folk? Scarlet lies in ruins.
and it made me hit a pothole. I was just roaming along and it went crack, out of the blue. Bad luck comes in threes, eh? So it's back to the wheel right again, and more to pay. It makes me wonder. I have my doubts about him. Ah, nonsense. I know the wheel right. He's an honest fellow. And what could he do to cause it anyway? Hey, what do who's I there? Know? I don't make wheels. Maybe he fixed it with bad wood. Don't. And the canon of St. Wenceslas in Olomouc was so drunk, <laughs> he dragged the pig to the market square, saddled it up, <laughs> and rode it out of the town gate. <laughs> 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 no, 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 we can, we can see, we can see that this wasn't going to end well. So, Sir Peter and I rode off to look for the good cannon on his pig. <laughs> they too find him. <laughs> we tracked the filthy beast down to a sty beyond Cronau. I mean, the beast with a tonsier on its head. <laughs> we never found the real pig, but the Reverend was sound asleep in the pig sty. <laughs> Birds of a feather stick together. <laughs> it seems the same goes for pigs and planets. <laughs> <laughs> I toast, gentlemen, to pigs and planets. God <laughs> save them, bacon. <laughs> Sir Hans, forgive my intrusion, but I need... Oh, but what? You uh, want to join us? Want to <laughs> buy us around? <laughs> I'm afraid we don't drink with peasants. You're not in your village now, boy. No, sir. <laughs> Curfew's been rung. The alehouse is closing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing closes while I'm sitting here. If that's all, you're dismissed. Are you out of your mind, lad? You can't cross his lordship. He's got a temper like a bear with gut egg. If I was you, I'd get lost before he shows it. The bailiff instructed me to close the tavern at the proper hour. He doesn't want anyone disturbing the peace after curfew. The bailiff? The bailiff can kiss my ass. I trust you haven't forgotten who's the rightful lord of Ratte. No, it's Sir Hannes. Oh, is he here? What is he? He's hiding under the table, maybe. <laughs> no, then what he wants isn't worth a fart in a bathhouse. And besides, he's only in charge till I grow up. <laughs> Which clearly hasn't happened yet. Enough. You can't talk to me like that. I'm a nobleman. Come now, sirs. You're not going to fight here, are you? We most definitely are. This yokel needs to be taught his place. In the name of Christ is happening here. Well, answer me, damn you. This peasant insulted me. I had to teach him a lesson. By rolling around in the mud like a hog? That's a fine example of noble conduct. Sir Hannes, the bailiff ordered me Silence! to... Silence! You shut your mouth and thank your lucky stars that you are Radzig's ward. Have you gone out of your mind? Raising your hand to a nobleman? And you, Hans. How many times have I told you that drinking with your subjects might be good for their morale, but it's bad for your honor? <sighs> you spend all your days drinking and chasing wenches, which wouldn't matter if you paid any attention at all to your duties. And now we see what that leads to. Tomorrow, you will go with me to a hearing. Some landowners have asked me to settle a dispute. It'll be an excellent lesson for you. I had planned to go hunting, but if you think listening to the pointless gripes of a bunch of old fools will benefit me, so be it. Oh, hunting. Well then, Your Grace, I'll tell you what. You can go hunting. Really? Oh, naturally. Who am I to deprive the young Lord Capon of his sport? And you can take Henry here as your page. Well, him? Absolutely not. You'll do as I've commanded. It's time you learned how to lead people, and not just in drinking and brawling. Now get out of my sight. 
Sir, I have responsibility to the bailiff. Not I anymore. Can't... Your responsibilities now are to Lord Capon. It's time you learned how to behave in the presence of nobility. Let's go. Tell the kitchen I'm hungry. It's been a long journey. Herman, of course. She's with our executioner now.
What's that?
What's that? from next door, just go ahead and take a bite out of us. What is it with you? There's nobody here.
Here I am. I'm overjoyed. Have you got a horse? No, sir. Where would someone like me get a horse? Good point. Unless it was a cart horse, I suppose. Well, you'll just have to trot along behind me like a good dog. Whatever you say. Farewell. Yes, sir. Anush was right. I should have behaved differently. More, well, gentlemen. But that doesn't mean you were in the right. You can't throw a lord out of the tavern in his own town. Understand? Yes. I, I was just... What? Speak up! Don't worry, I won't bite your head off. It's just that when you said those things in the arena, sir, I, I was a um, little upset. Ah! I'd just like to tease Greenhorns a little. And you vexed me too. You were insolent to Captain Bernard and they rewarded you with service. Whenever I do... Let us talk of something else. Is this your first time hunting? This kind, yes. I've been hunting since I could walk. If you're not a complete blockhead, you might learn something useful. And if you don't cock it up entirely today, maybe I'll take you again. It's always helpful to have a minion at hand. As I said, I have hunted before, but it wasn't... Chasing bunnies with a pitchfork isn't hunting. Bring me wine and bacon from the saddlebag.
Coming up, sir. At long last. So, are you enjoying being on the hunt? I am, although we haven't actually hunted anything yet. That doesn't matter. Hunting is a diversion. The main thing is to get out of Ratte for a while. Listening to Hanush's lectures all day long would drive anyone mad. How come Hanush looks after you anyway? For a start, he doesn't look after me. I'm not an infant blacksmith's boy. Hanush is just managing my property until I'm an adult. When will that happen? What are you implying? Nothing. I didn't mean it like that. I meant that you seem quite adult to me already, so... Well, it's hard to say. Before he died, my father appointed a council of nobles to decide the matter. Only they can't be bothered travelling halfway across the country just to assess the claim of some stripling. Under normal circumstances, it wouldn't be necessary. The king would decide on my adulthood. Only... The king is gone. Just so. If I may ask, sir, what does a lord like you do all day? When I was little, I was awfully bored, I can tell you. There was always some courtier or teacher dogging my footsteps. Now I spend most of my time trying to learn from Sir Hanush. Governing is no joke, at least most of the time. Only last week I had to listen to complaints from my subjects. But that could be interesting too, couldn't it? <laughs> my lord, this yokel here empties his piss pot in my yard. And sir... That old hag put a spell on my cow, and sir, my old woman is fucking half the village. Like a flock of sheep bleating all the time. Even study is more interesting. What are we going to hunt? Cumans. What? Cumans? But... <laughs> I got you there. <laughs> we'll see what we can get. But I'd like to bag a boar. One, at least. And a few hares, too, eh? But what about you? Before I couldn't get a word out of you, now your tongue's loosened. So, tell me about scallops. I heard Sigismund had a hundred banners there. I don't know, sir. I didn't have time to count them. Both of my parents were killed in Scalic, right in front of my eyes. The Cumans slaughtered my friends and neighbours, and it was a miracle I got away. I don't know what else I can add. I'm sorry about that. But tell me, I heard in the tavern... What, that Sigismund flew down on a dragon? That the Cumans have horns and hooves? I'm sorry, my lord, but for me, Scalic isn't a tale of adventure to share over a tankard of ale. All right. I understand. Well... Never mind. Anyway, it's too late to go anywhere today. But tomorrow we set off at first light. Got it? Yes, sir.
What are you waiting for? Your lord requires you for the hunt. Oh, really? Such a renowned hunter needs help. You wouldn't dare mock your betters now, would you? Oh, heaven forbid, your lordship. If that's the way you want it, peasant, we'll meet back here at noon. Whoever has the most hairs wins. Oh, and if you don't have anything to shoot with, there's a crate in the camp with some old hunting equipment. You can help yourself. After all, there's no sport in trouncing some wretch who hasn't a chance in hell. <laughs> By all means, Sir Hans. Ha! You'll soon be laughing on the other side of your grubby face. And now turn your back for a while. I know a few tried and tested spots in these woods, and I don't want you stealing them. <laughs>
Hey, get out of here! This is no place for the likes of you! Get out, you bastard, or I shan't hold back. I warned you, you cur. You're free. Leave your weapon and go. All right.
How did the hunt go for you, sir? I did quite well. Look. Show me. Not bad, though. Quite good, actually. For a common blacksmith's boy. Um, shouldn't there be some reward for the victor? Jesus, the insolence. A serf asking his lord for coin. But never let it be said I'm a pinch purse. Very well, then. Your serf humbly thanks you, my lord. And now come along. Let's go and hunt some real game. Henry, mount up and let's go hunting. Watch out from the top of that man. You want to take him down with an arrow? Certainly. Why? Why wouldn't I? You won't kill him like that. Boar is hunted with spears. Is that so? So now all of a sudden you're a master huntsman, are you? Watch and learn. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Damn, I'm good. <laughs> Quiet. So next time you try to tell me I can't kill a boar with an arrow, you can... <laughs> Fuck. After him. Fetch! 
mount up, Henry. We're gonna chase down that swine. have bigger cops than you. to get caught by three loose tads! <laughs> Your mother is a whore!
Yes. Your mother's jacked you out, and your sisters have bigger corks than you. Megyek oszt, bebaszok. Mi más lehet itt? Beszarás! És pont amikor kedvem lenne valakiből kiverni a lelkem. Mi van? Hogy van az erő? Are you going to untie me? Henry! I'll have a bronze bust made of you, my friend. But where have you been till now? Oh, you know, I was picking berries, had a drink of wine, took a little nap. They almost had me roasting on a spit. <laughs> I'd say it looked more like they were about to take your maidenhood. Now look here, dung grubber. Is that any way to speak to a nobleman? Uh, I, I apologise, sir. I'm just glad you're all right. <laughs> I'm yanking your piddle, you dolt. Thank you for rescuing me. That wound doesn't look good, Sir Hans. You're right. Those cumin swine roughed me up a bit. And my damned horse has bolted. You'll have to get me home somehow. The sooner we get out of here, the better. Who knows how many bandits are creeping around here. Let's go then. I've had quite enough excitement already. It's Lord Capon! Get here, everybody! You, help him! How is it possible, Ratsy? Those bastards make so bold no more than a mile from the castle. We'll have to send out more patrols. 
That won't do us any good, Hanush. Even if we had ten times the men, we couldn't beat through every thicket in the fiefdom. You sent for me, sir? Come in. I don't know how to thank you, Henry. If it wasn't for you, Hans would be dead. And to think I sent you out with him as a punishment. I was only doing my duty, sir. Don't be so modest, young Henry. You showed not only courage, but loyalty to your liege. That's why I'm taking you into my personal service. <laughs> sir, I... Uh... <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well, let's celebrate your promotion and Sir Hans's recovery. Well, don't just stand there, lad. Pour us a drink. I'm sorry to interrupt, sir, but I've urgent tidings. What now? A stable boy came from Neuhof. He says brigands raided the stud farm this morning. There's many dead or maimed. Tell us exactly what happened. I'm not sure. The boy was so shook up he could barely speak. He said the bandits murdered for the joy of it. I'm sorry, sir. Your vassal Smill is dead. Who did this? Who were they? We don't know, sir. The stable boy just kept babbling about some huge fellow in black armor who led the attack. Take as many men as you need, and don't stop until you've found those bastards. And bring me their heads! Yes, sir. My men at your disposal too, Hanush. Thank you, friend. Sir, let me ride with them. He's full of piss and vinegar, isn't he? Their leader, he must be the one who attacked me at Scalitz. There can't be two men in the whole kingdom who look like that. You think he might still have my sword? No doubt you could use another swordsman, Captain. Uh, as you command, my lord. How soon can you leave, Bernard? Soon as the men are ready, sir. Good. Wait in the courtyard for Henry. And uh, give him a horse. His own mount? His reward for saving Sir Hans. He'll need it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, go! I want these culprits in the hands of the executioner as soon as possible. I won't let you down, sir. The Neuhoff stud farm's been raped. We don't know much about what happened, just what that Neuhoff stable boy told us. Get your arses bounded up and let's ride out, on the double. Maybe we'll catch up with that rabble. Can we go? Are you ready? I'm ready, Captain. Good. Then follow me, keep quiet, and do exactly as you're told. I don't know what Sir Radzig sees in you, and I don't care. If you're to ride with my men, I expect you to listen. Yes, sir. Against all better judgment, they've decided to give you your own horse. The dappled gray beside my stallion is yours. Make sure you take good care of him. Now, mount up and ride behind us.
Yeah! Where's your master? In... in the paddock. <sighs> Crucifix? What kind of beasts could do this? Like a 
lot of the martyrs. What happened here? Why? Someone came at night and hamstrung every one of them. The horses, screaming, must have woke poor Radek, the stable boy. And when he tried to stop them... And then my husband, when my husband tried to help them, they killed him too. And when they were done, they put a torch to the stables. My sincere condolences, ma'am. I swear we'll hunt those monsters down and make them pay for this. The horses were still alive when I came. We had to finish them off. All of them. The pain in their eyes. They couldn't understand how anyone could do this to them. Did they steal anything? Any horses? Nothing. They wanted blood, not coin. Did your husband quarrel lately? Was there anyone who might want revenge? He argued over the price of a saddle, maybe, but nothing... Nothing that could drive a man to... This... These are dark days when there's more kindness in horses than in men. Did you see anything? How many were there? Or what did they look like? We saw no one. Has anyone tried to follow the trail? No. We were fighting the blaze until now, and even if we weren't, what chance would any of us have against someone who could do this? A pox on it. Mount up and quarter the area. We have to find out where they went. Look for tracks and ask the folk if they saw anyone. Fuck, someone must have at least caught sight of them. Yes, yes sir. sir. What about me, Captain? What the hell use are you? You stay here. Please, let me do something. I could have a look around the area and see if they left any tracks. Well, if you must. Just don't get in anyone's way. Don't go too far and come back here when you're done. I'd just like to know. And I'd like for my friends not to be murdered while you sit warm and safe behind those castle walls. But we came just as soon as we could. You tell that to Franta. Lying there. Fucking lying there, splitting to you like a pig. Go see him. Go fucking tell him that you came as soon as you could. Uh, what a fucking mess. 